that ball to the right field. It is high, Adios, it amigo. is far, and it is gone. Holy cow. Zane Harris crushed that one. A long drive towards right center field, and it's gone in the trees. It's from Brinkwick. Swung on and miss, and the ball game is over. The Harbor Hawks have defeated the Katuit Kettleers. That one is a good long drive towards left field, and gone! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Lincoln Revel alongside Austin Dakota coming to you from Judy Walden Scarefile Field at McKeon Park for this game between the Highness Harbor Hawks and the Orleans Firebirds. We're just about ready to get underway here in Austin. It was a fantastic game last night on all sides of the ball for the Harbor Hawks last night as we took a 5-1 to one win over the Falmouth Commodores. Well, the bats have picked up lately, Lincoln, and last night they kind of put it together on both sides, as you mentioned. Not only were the bats effective in the ball game, but the pitching staff was sensational. Jonas Scalaro firing six innings, allowing just one run on ten strikeouts. He was efficient through those six, and then Nolan Crisp came in and slammed the door for the final three to allow just one run to the Commodore team that has given a lot of guys, a lot of teams problems this year. They can score runs in bunches, but the Harbor Hawks were able to uh, limit them on the road. That was the second win of the season against the Commodores for the Harbor Hawks, and we're looking to get back-to-back -back wins as we play the Firebirds. But first, we're going to get started here. Adrian Saravo is going to be on the mound for the Harbor Hawks to start this game off. He had a fantastic outing in his last appearance as he also went five innings and just was shut down, really. He was fantastic in his last outing. Yeah, Saravo, another guy who can really a limit base runners. He doesn't give up a ton of hits and surely doesn't walk a lot of guys, but in his last outing on short rest, came in and gave five five innings and just the one run. He's on short rest again here, Lincoln. The last time we saw him was Wednesday. So four days rest. We'll see how long Saravo can go tonight. Scalaro did it last night on four days rest, and we'll see if the right-hander can do it tonight. Jeff Costello is going to start us off here for the Firebirds as Austin, if you want to, go ahead and explain what does the, that starting lineup for the Firebirds look like for us tonight. Yeah, the Firebirds leading off with Jeff Costello, the right fielder who's up now. Luke Keyshaw, the left fielder batting second. Chase DeLauder, the center fielder batting third. Batting cleanup, Tyler Locklear, the third baseman. Batting fifth, Trey Harmon, the first baseman. Batting sixth, Corey Acton, DH. Batting seven, Julio Marcano, the second baseman. Batting eight, Justin McNiss, the catcher. And batting nine, David Marcano, the shortstop. Very talented Orleans Firebirds squad as that one is lofted and fouled for a 1-2 count now. That one hitting into the Harbor Hawks bullpen. The Firebirds with some of the hottest bats in the in the Cape League as they've had a, a few multi-home run games, including one against the Brewster Whitecaps where they hit five home runs amongst their starting lineup. 1-2 here for Saravo. He likes to go with the slider a lot in these counts. Fastball up high. That is left up there. Four ball two. Two balls and two strikes now. Saravo from Weatherford College with a 2.46 ERA out of four games. He started four as well. So this is his fifth appearance, fifth start of the season as well. 14.2 innings pitched overall. He's allowed ten hits. Four runs of all of which were earned as that one's lined and through for base hit past a diving Romano. And that's going to be a leadoff base hit for Jeff Costello. Yeah, and we have both the Romanos on the right side of the infield as Nate Romano makes his debut tonight for Hyannis, or Nick Romano, that is, and then his brother Ryan, the Twins. Ryan at second base. We've seen Ryan all season long. He's played second, short, and third. Now Nick makes his debut tonight. He's a first baseman. He used to play a little bit of third base. He says he was better than Ryan is at third. <laughs> I would love to see him play third then because <laughs> Ryan Romano has been fantastic at the hot corner. This first pitch to Luke Keyshaw is thrown over to second for one. Throw to first gets over the head of Romano. That's going to bounce off the Firebirds dugout. Throw down to first is in time for out number two as Keyshaw ended up taking a trip over first base. He's trying to get an interference call. I think he ran into the umpire. I think he, I'm not 100% sure. I didn't see it. I was watching the ball. Yeah, I didn't see it either. He ran into the ump. He did, and then he fell down. So the throw from Ryan Romano goes over his brother's head, but Caleb Pendleton was there to back it up the catcher and had the wherewithal to flip on to first who got Keyshaw, who was just 
in no man's land after colliding. Well, an interesting double play, but a but double play nonetheless as they're now two away for Chase DeLauder. As the pitch from Saravo comes in, that one's fouled off for strike one, heading into the parking lot. Bounces over some cars as the count moves to 0-1. And that just shows you how good Caleb Pendleton is behind the plate. Being able to run down, that's something you get taught at a young age as a catcher, to get down the first baseline and back it up. He'll do it again here. Chopped over to second, Romano thrown to the other Romano. Four out number three. That's going to do it for the top half of the first inning as we head to the bottom half. The Harbor Hawks getting their first set of at-bats after this on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Bottom half of the first coming up as the Harbor Hawks getting their first set of at-bats. Clark Elliott going to start us off. Kyle Ball on deck and Luke Mann in the hole as we quickly go through this. Starting on it for the Harbor Hawks, as we mentioned, Elliott, Ball, and Mann, the first three, followed by Nick Romano making his debut at first base. He'll be in the cleanup spot. Zane Harris, the designated hitter, will be in the five hole, followed by Dom Johnson, the right fielder. Mitch Hartigan playing in left field, playing in the seven hole. Caleb Pendleton at catcher in the eight hole, followed by Ryan Romano, who will be bringing up the rear at second base in the nine hole. As on the mound, Brett Witrowski comes home with the 0-1. Uh, the one. Arlene's broadcast team has arrived. Ah, There was a massive accident, a rollover on Route 6 here down the Cape today. So a lot of people are late getting to this ball game, which is why these stands are a little bit more empty than normal. Yeah, well, we almost had to make a emergency substitution and for our broadcast, actually, <laughs> as Austin took a got caught in that traffic. I did. I got on the highway. Nobody was moving. There was a, a truck apparently four miles up on its uh, rear, I guess. But I was able to, uh, I guess, navigate the road. <laughs> we'll just call it that. Now, ha have you heard if there are any, um, like, if anyone was injured in that rollover? I know it was a single a single accident, a yeah, single Yeah, I, I haven't seen any updates on it. Well, hopefully no one's injured. Yeah. But Thoughts and prayers go out to the people involved in that accident as the 3-1 comes in that's lofted out towards left field that's Keyshaw coming over towards the third base line and he dives for it and makes the catch for out number one a beautiful catch there from Keyshaw for the first out of the game Elliott almost with a chance for extra bases there but Keyshaw robs him just at the third base line that's just a terrific play Elliott takes the ball the other way just gets under it a bit though so it hangs up enough and Keyshaw just ran a long way to get that one and Obviously, any diving play is going to get your attention. That's a definitely a highlight real play. Fantastic catch as now Kyle Ball steps up to the plate. Ball reached base twice and did one for four as he grounds that one to short. Marcano throws it on over to first for out number two. Quick two outs here for the Firebirds here in the bottom of the first. Well, it's good to see the Harbor Hawks putting the ball in play. That's what made them so effective last night because when you put the ball in play, the other team's more likely to make an error, obviously. If you mm -hmm. go down and strike out every time, you're not even going to give yourself a chance. But 
The Commodores made a couple of errors late last night, which allowed a couple of insurance runs to come across for Hyannis. They ended up not needing those runs anyway, as the final score was 5-1. to one. So the Johnson, the Johnson home run would have been enough. The Harbor Hawks reached double digits in, on the hit column while uh, causing three errors for the Commodores. Commodores only went down with three hits in uh, last night's game. One run on those three hits. The 1-0 pitch finds the outside of the zone. A long strike call there from our good friend Sparky Burns, who's the home plate umpire for tonight's game. We've seen Sparky at all three umpire positions, and I think it's safe to say he's a broadcast favorite, at least from our broadcast team, as the 1-1 comes in. That one's outside for ball two. Luke Mann now at the plate in the left-handed hole. Left-handed batter's box as Nick Romano awaits his first at-bat as a Harbor Hawk. 2-1 from Wachowski is chopped and fouled. Picked out of the air by Mickness. Foul ball is called. Now 2-2, two, two, two away. Now this is typically a situation, Lincoln, where you go grab your lucky hat. Is it retired or what's the plan for the lucky hat? Um, I'm going to see what happens with this one. I'm not going to go with it. It was one for two in last night's game, so I'm going to see what happens if we don't use it, see if it goes well. It's starting to rain a little bit more now. The 2-2 two -two swung on and missed as that will end the first inning. Three up, three down for the Harbor Hawks. We head to the second on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Rain, rain, stay away. We have baseball to play here at McKeon Park. Starting to drizzle a little bit. We're hoping that that's all we get here tonight. Hey. Lincoln Revel alongside Austin Dakota here for the top of the second inning. We are scoreless here as Adrian Saravo comes back for his second inning of work. Drops that one in for strike one to Tyler Locklear. And the second inning gets underway. Right before we started the game, you and I were looking at the, the forecast, and there was nothing. Like the, no, yeah, yeah. It was cloudy, but all of a sudden now it's raining. It's welcome to New England. <laughs> That's how it's been the last month. It's rained almost every day. Yeah, rain has become something, somewhat of a yeah, regular occurrence, you might say. It's Very normally not like this either. Not in July. I do see some clouds starting to break open. See some blue starting to break through the clouds out towards the outfield as the count becomes one ball and two strikes now to Locklear. Locklear in the right-handed box as he grounds that one down the first baseline. That goes foul. One and two now the count. Tyler Locklear, originally from Abingdon, Maryland. Goes to Virginia Commonwealth as the one-two. Grounded down the third baseline, picked up by Luke Mann. The throw over to first is in time for out number one, a 5-3 putout to start this second inning. 
Good play by Luke Mann over at third. We haven't seen him at third for a few days now. He's been DHing as of late. He had pitched against Bourne last week, so they've been giving him some rest, letting him hit, keeping that hot bat in the lineup, but has not lost a step over at the hot corner. And now with one away, Trey Harmon steps to the plate. Harmon, six foot four, two hundred forty-five pounds. He's a two eighty-six hitter so far on the season. In five games, he's four for fourteen. As he watches that one go, two balls and no strikes to count. Harmon from Somerset, Kentucky, plays at Stetson. Teammates with the Harbor Hawk shortstop, Kyle Ball. That one's lofted. That's over, and a jumping attempt from Ball can't be made. That's going to go into center field. Picked up by Elliott. That's a one-out single for Trey Harmon. You mentioned Kyle Ball. Then get the ball gets hit his way. Unfortunately, just out of reach for him. And puts a base runner on for the Firebirds. If you're the Harbor Hawks, you want to replicate that first inning, maybe get another double play. Travo making his way back to the mound as Corey Acton is going to step up to the plate now. Sravo with a quick look over at first before coming home with the first pitch. That one's lined down the third baseline. That's going to drop for a fair ball. And that's going to be runners on second and third now as that is a double for Corey Acton, Trey Harmon. Extending over to third. And a really perfectly placed ball there from Acton on that double. Yeah, that might have been right on the line, down the left field line, if not a foot inside. But a good job by Mitch Hardigan to get all the way over there and cut it off because if it gets to that corner out near the foul pole, just past the bullpen, then that's a run coming in. As Harmon was able to move all the way to third. So if you're a Saravo, runners... In scoring position now, just one away. You're looking for a, a weak out where you keep those runners where they are. You know, a pop up to the infield, a strikeout. So, a fly ball of the outfield might be a run. One away, two runners on in scoring position. Julio Marcano at the plate. He watches that one. He didn't like that one. It's on the inside part of the plate, a emphatic strike call from Sparky Burns <laughs> behind the dish, but Marcano kind of shook his head a bit. We saw Julio the last time we played the Firebirds. Ended one for three, along with a walk. The one from Saravo comes in. That good stop there from Pendleton. That ball finds the dirt. Is that evens the count at one and one? Julio Marcano, twin brothers with his with another Firebird in the starting lineup today, David Marcano. David's going to be in the nine hole for the Firebirds. Twin brothers, the Marcano brothers, David is about five minutes older than Julio. Yeah, twins on each side of the ball. I mean, mm -hmm. got the Firebirds with the twins, the Marcanos, the Romanos on the Harbor Hawks. I, that might be a, I don't know if that's ever going to happen in the Cape again. No. Or if, if it has happened before. I don't think it's happened. We'll have I've to find out. I don't know if how, we, how we find that out. but <laughs> I've checked with a couple of sources that know a, a pretty good amount about the Cape League. Neither of them have heard of it happening before. It's interesting. It'll be interesting to see what comes about from this. The Romano brothers on the right side of the infield. Ryan Romano at second. And Nick Mar Nick Romano at first as the one-two swung on and fouled off. Fastball at 92 miles an hour from Saravo on that pitch. Nick was at the game yesterday in Falmouth and watching as he's activated and in the starting lineup today in batting cleanup. He was playing baseball already in Massachusetts in another collegiate summer league. A couple of UCF Knights now on the team as, of course, Romano over at first along with Trent Taylor, who's not in the starting lineup in tonight's game, but he just got activated as well. Gets the Harbor Hawks another outfielder, which means more time could be in the infield for Caden Rose. And he gets a day off today. Caden Rose had started every game this season for Hyannis. All 22. And 
Caden Rose has finally earned himself a day off. 1-2 count to Marcano still. Saravo takes a look over at second for coming home. Lofted, that's going to stay in the infield. That's going to be Ball backing up. He's going to make that one just out of the dirt. As that is out number two, runners will stay where they are. And a very fortunate out for the Harbor Hawks here is they're now two away with Justin Mickness up to the plate. That's exactly what you need if you're Adrian Saravo. Mentioned it before the at-bat started. He needed an out where those runners don't move up. You keep the game tied at zero now. With two away, you're okay with the fly ball to the outfield that mm -hmm. your guys can catch because there's no sack fly, obviously. It would end the inning. You're okay with a ground ball to the right side. So just looking to get that final out however you can. Yeah, the defense for the Harbor Hawks can take a break. Not a break, but a breath, that is, as they're now two away. Everybody in their normal positions. Asravo comes home with the first pitch to Mickness. He swings at that one, but can't find it. 0-1. Mickness at catcher for the Firebirds. From Kent State, batting 192 on the season. He's got two RBI and five hits on the season so far. The 0 1 from Saravo. Grounded over towards second. Picked up by Ryan Romano. Throw to Nick, Mar Nick Romano is in time for out number three. That's going to end the top half of the second. But before we head to the third, we're actually going, or to the bottom of the second, we're actually going to toss it on down to our silent reporter, Taylor Farmer. Taylor, what's on update? Y'all in three innings of work for you last night to close the game with a win. How'd that one feel? Uh, Jonah started us off with a good start yesterday, and I just tried to come in and complete the game and throw the last three innings, give our team a chance to win. Now your second year playing in the Cape League. What's this experience been like for you? Uh, it's been awesome. Being able to come up here for two years now, play for the Harbor Hawks for a second season, it's been a really good experience. Now you played with and against the best of the best here with Team USA and in the SEC. How do you feel you've grown over the past couple of years? Uh, just from high school to college to playing summer ball, even in high school and up here in the Cape, it's been a learning experience, of course, and just trying to get my game to the highest level. Awesome. Well, thank you. Here at McKeon Park, alongside Nolan Crest, I'm Taylor Farmer, Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Fantastic interview from our sound reporter, Taylor Farmer, who caught up with Nolan Crisp before today's game. Crisp had a fantastic relief outing last night as he came in relief of Jonas Scalaro and threw three fa fabulous innings, I might say. And we're actually going to take a little break now as we head now to the bottom half of the second on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Nick Romano starting us off here in the bottom of the second, making his Harbor Hawks debut from the University of Central Florida. He's in the right-handed box as Brett Witrowski comes home with that first pitch. That misses for ball one, one and oh the count. Nick Romano, twin brothers with Ryan Romano. I asked, I talked to Nick before today's game, and he said that Ryan is actually about 10 minutes older than Nick is. Nick Romano, the senior at UCF, originally from UCF, of course, in Orlando, Florida. Count now at two balls and one strike after that one finds the zone. Romano for the Knights ended with a 171 average in the season. Ended with 12 hits, 10 RBI on those 12 hits. 
and he had two home runs during the season. In the cleanup spot today, a good chance for him to make his day. A solid impression. A 3-1 pitch that is killed and way foul, but a massive fly ball. That would have been a <laughs> moonshot had it been fair. You think you're safe parking way over there on the grass in front of the high school, but maybe not. He turned on that ball very early and put it a mile. He did. He caught every stitch of that one as the payoff comes in. That misses down low. Romano reaches on a leadoff walk here in the second. Solid debut for Romano. He works the count, fouls off the pitch, and takes a nice change up in the dirt. Didn't get him fishing, and we're in a good spot here to start the second. Get ahead, get ahead early. That's the, the key for Hyannis and all their wins. They were ahead at some point in the ball game early on. Even in the two at one, they battled back late, but they were able to get a lead the last two against Falmouth. They jumped out 4-0 early in the first, on the first victory in Falmouth. And last night, they got up early on a two-run home run. So if you get ahead early, that ends up helping out your pitchers late. First pitch now to Nick Harris. That misses. Or Zane Harris, I apologize. Sorry. I still have Romano on my mind. <laughs> As everyone's counting out to 1-0. and St. Harris has put together some good at-bats as of late. He's walked a ton. He's got some power, too. But Orlean's got to be careful with him. He Harris. likes to pull it to right field here at McKeon. Harris reached base once in last night's game on an error. Reached home as well, one of, part of the three-run inning back in the eighth in that 5-1 victory. With all the... With all the team start to shift him to the left a little bit the center field and moves to the left the right field gives him the line but he hits the ball the other way like on a regular basis mm -hmm. one home he has one home run out to that right center field area just past the curry college sign to the to the left of the scoreboard he also had one in last night's game that went to deep left field so he has experience hitting to all sides the orleans defense seems to be about about even. No weird shift by the looks of it right now as that first pitch comes in. The long strike call from Mr. Burns brings the count to 0-1. Johnson, the new Kansas State transfer, batting 222 on the season so far as he stands in that right-handed box. The 0 one from Wachowski is flown and fouled. That's going to head out of play past the Firebirds' dugout. Good pitch there from Wachowski, an 88-mile-per-hour fastball like on the hands, and Johnson's able to fight it off. Now 0-2, he has a lot of different ways he can go. Hands, and Johnson's able to fight it off. Now 0-2, he has a lot of different ways he can go. Try to get him fishing at something in the dirt or come back high and tight with a fastball in the hands, but... The double play is in order, and that could be key for Orleans to get out of this inning. Infield fly rule also in effect with nobody out. Runners on first and second. Wachowski taking a while in the set. He comes home. That's going to be off the bat and fouled, oh. luckily. An unfortunate Man. pitch there as Johnson kind of smiles that one off. And he ducked, and I thought he brought his bat down, but I think the curveball dipped right as his bat was going down. Mm-hmm. It was an off-speed pitch. That's something you don't see every day. It's unfortunate when you do, but mm. once in a while. But mm -hmm. I've never actually seen it hit off. I've seen it hit off the bat when guys have ducked, but I've never seen it hit off the bat and pop up in the air like that to almost be caught. Yeah, no. Almost an out number one, which would have been, I'd say that might be the worst way to go out, where you don't even swing at it and you still foul it off. Count still at zero and two. Johnson bobbing his front foot up and down. Swings at that breaking ball. Can't find it. 75 miles an hour. A beautiful pitch from Wachowski for out number one. Great pitch. He starts that on the outer half of the plate, and it just dives off into the left hand and hitter's batting box, and Johnson goes to get it but comes up empty, and a big out number one. Second strikeout on the night for Wachowski. Has one in each inning so far as Mitch Hardigan is going to step up to the plate.
Hardigan from FAU, Florida Atlantic University, batting 172. That first pitch to him, finds the outside of the zone. 0-1 the count. Hardigan sporting the FAU helmet there. As he digs back into the left-handed box, sporting a bat with a gray barrel, very light gray. His FAU teammate Caleb Pendleton on deck behind him with the matching helmet. The 0-1, that's too far outside. One ball and one strike now. Cardigan's had some experience in Lock of the outfield this season. As the 1-1 comes in, grounded down the first baseline, foul. Brings the count to 1-2. and two. That breaking ball he's thrown a few times tonight, about 77 to 79 miles per hour. That one Hardigan was out in front on. It didn't hang up a bit, but he's able to fight it off. Now 1-2. I don't know if he goes back to that here or as Hardigan was out in front of it. It's Maybe worked. you try to go with the fastball. It's worked for him a couple of times, but it'll be interesting to see if he ends up coming back to it. I don't think we've seen it back-to-back -back yet. Not, he's avoided it more to lefties, too. The 1-2. Fastball misses mm -hmm. up high, coming at 88. Yeah, against left-handed hitters, it's especially tough. Unless you bury that breaking ball, with being a right-handed pitcher, that is, to left-handed hitters, unless you bury it at their feet, if you get that hanging just a bit over the zone, it's easier. they're not going to go reaching for it. It's going to come right in on their hands and... They can get the barrel out in front, as Hardigan did earlier. The 2-2. Two -two. Breaking ball, misses down low. And tried to, that's what he's trying to do is bury it on the feet, but just too far inside and being extra careful now to Hardigan. Mm. Full count, but a good spot. You definitely don't want to bring in a pitch on the inside towards the belt. We've seen what can happen when you give these hitters those pitches. Payoff coming in with one away. Misses hop high. That's going to load the bases for Caleb Pendleton. <laughs> and he's the guy you want up with the bases loaded. I laugh because Pendleton's first two collegiate at-bats were in the same inning, and they were both grand slams. So if there's one guy familiar with grand slams and bases loaded opportunities, it's Caleb Pendleton. And this is a great time for a mountain visit if you're Orleans. Little mound visit here for the Firebirds, including Mickness. In this meeting, the infield's going to stay where they are. We've seen a lot of power from Pendleton. Mm. Got a couple, two homers, four RBI, and his last start, I believe it was, he had the home run here. That was against Chatham. Mm -hmm. on Saturday, the solo shot. And you'll even take a sack fly here, too, Lincoln. is He doesn't have to do it with the long ball. You're tied at zero. Early on, you want to get a run almost any way you can. Just got to put the ball in play, hope to get something deep enough to score Romano from third. Pendleton, along with those two home runs, also had a ground rule double against the Bourne Braves a few nights ago. That came in at Bourne, but it was a very well hit ball. Thought it might have been home run number three, but sadly it just went to dead center field. Anywhere else it would have been gone. He's definitely swinging the bat better as of late. That first home run, his first hit of the season was a home run, and since then his bat's been on fire. The 0-1 coming in, tries to check it, but can't do it as that brings the count to 0-2 now. He loves to throw the breaking ball to right. He's in that 79 miles per hour coming in on you in the dirt. They're having a tough time holding up against it. We saw Johnson go down swinging earlier in the inning. He got Pendleton chasing here. See if he doubles up on it. Pendleton, as Austin mentioned, in his last start against the Anglers, had that home run. Other than that, went down with two strikeouts and walked. So we reached base twice. The 0-2 from Wachowski to be waited upon a little bit as Wachowski steps off, digs right back in, and we're ready to go. Bases are loaded. Pitch comes in. The 0-2 is fouled. Another breaking ball there at 75. Yeah, the breaking ball there. Wasn't surprised that he doubled up. I don't know about tripling up with it. 
Pendleton was early on that one. Maybe you come in with a fastball in the hands to try to get him. I have a feeling we're going to see quite a few breaking balls here for the next two batters as we've seen Pendleton up. Romano, another, another right-handed hitter on there's, deck. There's the fastball trying to get him, but just got it up high. Not enticing enough for Pendleton to get the swing. Now you set him up. You know, you got to change the eye level there, bring him up in the zone. Maybe you go back to the breaking ball here. One ball, two strikes the count. Nick Romano over at third, Harris over at second, and Mitch Hardigan now at first. Wachowski, the right-hander, comes home, payoff. Breaking ball, just missing the zone. And that's the 2-2, two -two actually. I saw that 3-2 count to Hardigan, and... Rich. Wachowski making his season debut tonight for Orleans, and this is a difficult situation to find yourself in here in your first Cape start. See if he can work himself out. You've seen the fastball, now the breaking ball. Can go anywhere here on 2-2. Whatever his best pitch is, we'll see what he goes with. The tiebreaker, that's in the dirt, another breaking ball. Good battle here from Pendleton. He's fought back in the count now. With a full count. Looks like he has a slider and a curveball. I think that one was the curve in the dirt. The slider is the one that took Johnson out of the zone and we saw a couple times to Pendleton. Uh, at least that's what it appears like from this view. 3-2 again. The pitch is fouled right off the knob of the bat. Nowhere to put Pendleton, so he's got to come in the zone. In the fastball, we've seen about 88 Lincoln, so it's a pitch that if Pendleton can recognize out of the hand, it's not one that's going to blow by you. No, yeah, definitely not. It's effective as we've seen with Jonah Scalaro. Scalaro sets about 88, but if you can pinpoint it, it's definitely effective. The payoff is fouled once again. Three and two, still the count to Pendleton. The excitement builds even further. Quite the battle brewing here. A chance for the Harbor Hawks to take an early lead. A base hit, scores at least one. Zane Harris with a surprising amount of speed on second. We'll see if he can we'll see if he gets waved if a base hit does come along. Of course the double play is possible here as that one's grounded over towards short. Diving play from Marcano. That can't get to him. As that will result in no outs. He bobbles that ball and the Hard Rock score a run. He ruled a hit, so an RBI single for Pendleton, and good things happen when you hit the ball hard and on the ground, and that's a tough diving play to make for Marcano. Unfortunately for the Harbor Hawks, still only one out, and you got to run in. Base is still loaded, and a couple of guys who have been swinging the bat well as of late coming up in Romano and Elliott. Harbor Hawks out to another early lead here, leading one nothing now against the Firebirds in the bottom of the second. Ryan Romano. Now at the plate as that ball comes in, that misses. Four ball, one. Nick Romano, as we saw, just came in from third. Now Zane Harris on third. Hardigan over at second, and Pendleton now on first. Romano went one for four in last night's game. Two strikeouts, a flyout, and his last at bat was a single. Picked up an RBI and a stolen base as well as a run scored. It's an effective hit last night. Looking for another one here. And if some games you might only go one for four or get on base once, but if you're Romano and you have your one hit, if it drives in a run in that game and you steal a base, score a run, it's an effective night, even though you did get out more times than you get on, which is typical with the game of baseball which shows you how special of a game it is. You fail much more than you succeed, and you still have a good night. Yeah, Baseball, probably the only sport where you can fail 70% of the time and still make the Hall of Fame. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is. I mean, in basketball, you're not going to get to the Hall of Fame by being a 30% field goal shooter. shooter so Yeah, definitely not. In no. NFL, you're not going to go to the Hall of Fame throwing seven picks, three touchdowns. A long drive out towards left field from Romano. Back towards the warning track. That's going to be brought in by Keyshaw. Harris is going to tag from third. That's going to score another run for the Harbor Hawks. Going down as a sack RBI for Romano. Good job by Romano. He gets the ball in the air. Hits it deep enough to score Harris. And two runs in the second inning. That's a good sign for the Harbor Hawks. They matched their total of last night. 
with two in the second. Last night, that helped out. Get to an early lead tonight. Looking to do the same. And at first, off the bat, it looked like that was going to go a lot further than it did. Thought that might have a chance of going out, but sadly it just landed at the front of the warning track. Is now with two away. The hot bat of Clark Elliott steps up to the plate. Some activity in the Firebird bullpen as our right-hander gets set. Runners on first and second. That ball misses in the dirt for ball one. Elliott at 0 for 1. Had a fly out in the first inning to start the game off. That was the 45th pitch thrown by Wachowski. It's a lot of pitches to be throwing, and you're still in the second inning. Here's the 1-0. That one misses outside for ball two. You're in a good hitter's count now if you're Elliott. And you're looking for a fastball, I think, on 2-0. and And if you can get one in a spot that you like, I think mean, Elliott likes it on the inside part of the plate. Maybe you can turn on one, add to this lead. Mitch Hardigan has good speed at second base. Little mound meeting here between Mickness and Wachowski. Quickly adjourned as Mickness now heads... Back to his spot behind the dish. Little interleague action, or interdivision action, that is, as the Harbor Hawks in the west, the Firebirds, coming from the eastern side of the Cape. As the 2-0 comes in, a pop-up, straight up in the air, that's going to stay in the infield, called off by Locklear, and he makes the grab for out number three, Ending the second inning, but not before the Harbor Hawks take an early two-run lead. And we head to the third on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Back here now, top half of the third inning coming up as the Firebirds take the plate. David Marcano going to start us off. Jeff Costello on deck and Luke Keyshaw will be in the hole. As first pitch from Saravo comes in, swing and a miss. Brings up an 0-1 count. Saravo's going to be smiling on the hill after his team spots him two runs in the bottom of the second. You're always much more comfortable as a pitcher when you're pitching with a lead. You can afford to try things out, I think, more when you're pitching ahead. You know, if you miss with a fastball or you try to throw a breaking ball and it slips out and comes across the belt, it's not as bad when you're trailing and pitching in a tie game because one mistake is likely not going to cost you. And definitely got a feel good on the mound as he brings the 1-1 home. 
That one misses. Two balls and one strike now the count. As I mentioned, last inning, David Marcano, the older of the Marcano twins, his brother Julio is five minutes younger. Both Marcano brothers from the New Jersey Institute of Technology. Marcano batting 153 on the season with a home run and a pair of RBI. Three one from Saravo, a long drive out towards left field. That's going to be hard again. Coming over a little bit to his left and making the grab for out number one. Good pitch by Saravo, gets him under it, and an easy routine play in left for Mitch Hardigan, and there's one away. Good way to start the inning. Hardigan started off on a good run out to that ball, but ended up stopping after just a few steps. And now with one away. Jeff Costello is going to come up to the plate. He started off with a single, so he's one for one on the night. Shows bunt back up the middle. That's going to be picked up by Saravo. The throw on to first is just in time for out number two. And nice heads up play from Saravo. A good grab from Nick Romano over at first for that second out. Yeah, good play there by Saravo. And Costello runs really well. You're able to get him. Quick two outs here for the Harbor Hawks as Luke Keyshaw is going to step up to the plate. Keyshaw, 0 for 1, had an interesting little play there as hit into a 6 4 2 3 double play as we finally figured it out to be. Hit it over to short. Kyle Ball tossed it to Ryan Romano for 1, and then Romano tried to throw it to his twin brother over at first, and that one went over Nick, Nick's head. And on his way around first, Keyshaw actually fell into the first base umpire, Rick Emerson. And he couldn't get back to first base in time before that pass ball was picked up by Caleb Pendleton, who threw it over to Nick Romano for that out. Two-0 from Saravo misses down low. 3-0 now the count with two away. Saravo trying to avoid his first walk of the night. The 3-0 is a called ball, a four-pitch walk to Luke Keyshaw as he reaches with two away. A little bit of trouble finding the zone the last two batters as I think he was behind to Costello as well, or was that Marcano? One of the two is behind on. I believe it was Marcano. Mm -hmm. And as for Saravo, just needs to work on locating that fastball, maybe adjust a little bit on the hill. He's been consistent all year. Can't afford to walk, guys. That's what's come back to bite the Harbor Hawks, and a lot of their losses this season are the free passes. Now that 3-0 pitch, it didn't miss the zone by much. It just missed by about an inch or two. As that one misses in the dirt for ball one. That's five straight balls now for Saravo, and that's going to prompt a mound visit from Coach Korn. Coach Korn made a mountain visit last night with Nolan Crisp after he allowed two base runners, but Crisp not locked it down after that for the remainder of the game. So typically his words usually fix the, so the problem on the mound many times. Coach Korn, he's a very effective speaker. He's Whenever he tells a story, it, makes you, it really makes you want to listen. You know, he's one of those people that you enjoy listening to him talk. He's a very effective storyteller, and I'm sure he's a very good, I guess, pep talk giver, pepper, you know? <laughs> guess a, a good pepper. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> good motivator, maybe? Motivator. That's the word I was looking for, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the uh, Born Braves and Falmouth Commoners game that was set for a 6 p.m. first pitch has been pushed back to at least 7 Really? They've endured a couple of rain delays. Or Originally it was 6.20 after the first delay, then 7 now, at least 7, so it could be later. Well, hopefully the rain will stay over there as the little bit of rain that we had earlier on has ceased for now. The 1-0 pitch comes in. Good stop from Pendleton. So that brings the count now to 2-0. And if I'm DeLauder, who's now in the left-handed box, 
I'd say I'm at a hard red light until Saravo finds the zone here. Yeah, that's fair. He threw four straight balls to Keyshaw, who's on first. So I think you're kind of just waiting unless something looks appetizing to you. You're just sitting back, I think. That 2-0 pitch swung on and fouled off. Guess that one looked appetizing. Yeah. That one sort of sort of started to come in from the to the inside part of that zone. DeLauder just got his bat underneath it a bit as he fouled that one off. 2-1 and one now the count with 2-0-8. Harbor Hawks looking to get out of this inning without allowing a runner across. Still a long way to go for that as, as uh, Keyshaw is over at first. 2 1, runner goes. Pendleton throws from his knees down to second. The tag is not in time. Kyle Ball tried to tag the foot of Keyshaw, but instead he finds second. Good effort there. A pitch that was in the dirt, so Pendleton had no shot but to throw it from his knees, which is what he did, but. You're not going to get him many guys thrown out on a pitch low like that. Pendleton did catch three runners stealing in the ball game where he last was the starting catcher against Chatham. He also picked a runner off second base. He's been great this season behind the dish. I believe he's one of two players without an error on the year. That is correct. Him and Zane Harris, the only two who have not made an error. And now Nick Romano as well. His first start, though. Yeah. Count is full, three and two. And of course, Keyshaw, who's now on second, has his first stolen base of the season. He's one for one in stolen base attempts. Some enthusiastic words of encouragement to Saravo now as he brings the payoff after looking over at second. Here he comes. That breaking ball misses, ball four. Now back to back walks. As Chase DeLauder reaches first. That's going to bring Tyler Locklear to the plate. Well, now the force is at any base, so ground ball to third. Luke Mann can just step on the bag. Go the short way in the middle, and your infield stress is a little bit less about making that throw across the diamond on a tough play, so we'll see how Saravo attacks Locklear after back-to-back -back walks. All three bases are hot here for the Harbor Hawks, looking for that final out here in the top of the third. Stravo is gonna step off over towards second, no throw comes in. Keyshaw retreating back to second. His, the entire front half of his, both his jersey and his pants are filthy after sliding in to second just a few moments ago. Saravo with a few looks before coming home with the first pitch. Grounded back up the middle. Picked out of the air by Saravo. He tosses it over to first for out number three. And the Harbor Hawks save a run from crossing as they still lead 2-0 as we head to the bottom half of the third on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Bottom half of the third inning. Before we get started here in the third, a quick word from our sponsor, Curry College. Earn a bachelor's or master's degree, complete a certificate, or take a single course through the Division of Continuing Education and Graduate Studies at Curry College. 
In-person and high-flex classes run days, evenings, and weekends in Milton and Plymouth. To learn more about programs in business, accounting, criminal justice, education, nursing, and more, visit curry.edu. A little bit of a stumble there. Education. <laughs> Didn't. A little bit of a mispronunciation there, but, you know. Make it come back and make it come back the next time I end up reading that one. I don't think anyone would have noticed Lincoln. <laughs> no, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> I it's didn't really notice. Similar to a few games ago, I think it was the last time we played in uh, Falmouth, actually, where I said, I tried to say swing the bat, and I actually said swing. 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 Kyle Ball might not be swinging the bat here. 3-0. No, definitely not. 3-0 and now. Way ahead of the count from Wachowski. Pitch comes in. Four-pitch walk to start off the third here as Kyle Ball reaches for the first time today. We'll see how short of a leash they have with Wachowski. He's allowed a couple of base runners, two runs, two hits, but he's had some trouble with his command, issuing three walks now. And Kyle Ball has good speed. Brings up the meteor order, 3-4-5, man Romano Harris. So runs could be on their way for Hyannis. There is action in the, heart, in the uh, Firebirds bullpen as Nathan Florence starts to warm up. We'll see if he comes in during this inning. Luke Mann now at the plate for the Harbor Hawks. Yeah, Florence may be asked to work a couple of innings depending on how much longer Wachowski goes. Wachowski with a look over at first before coming set. First pitch to Mann. Is swung on and missed a breaking ball. Brings down to 0 and 1. Man is 0 for 1. He went down swinging to end the first. Runner on first as Wachowski comes home. Line past second, four base hit. Kyle Ball is going to reach second as that is a single for Luke Mann, who's one for two on the night. Great piece of hitting by Luke Mann. Gets the barrel out in front. I would not be surprised if that ends the day for Wichrowski. And that will. A call to the bullpen comes for the Orleans Firebirds. And we're going to take a break here on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Nick Romano, the first batter that 
Now Nathan Florence will face. Florence coming in relief of Brett Witrowski, whose night has ended. Not a terrible debut for Witrowski. He was all right. He got a couple of er outs early, but a couple of runs and walks came across on him. The first pitch from Florence is ripped up the middle for a base hit. That's going to be ball waved around third, and he'll score a run. The Harbor Hawks extend their lead to 3 to nothing here in the bottom of the third. Great piece of hitting by Nick Romano, who picks up his first Cape League single and RBI. And the Harbor Hawks add another. Romano one for one on the night. He's off to quite a hot start here, reaching his first two at-bats. Now Zane Harris, who's one for one, steps to the plate. Harris had a single in the second. He also reached home. One of the two runs in that second inning. Pitch from Florence, the right-hander comes in. That's a long strike call there from Mr. Burns as that brings him up to 0-1. Harris had a great swing his first at-bat. If he replicates that swing again, he could be looking at a couple of runs coming in, like his chances here. Florence at 6'3", 210 pounds. Brings the 0-1 pitch. Misses low for ball one. The way Harris has been swinging the bat as of late, I'd back the outfielders up even further than they are. We've seen a lot of power from Harris, especially in batting practice. He's launched some over the scoreboard, hit quite a few off of the scoreboard as well. That one finds a zone. Seems like a pretty wide strike zone for hmm. tonight's game. This count moves to one and two now. Now Florence from Massachusetts, from Wilbraham, Mass., Attends the University of Hartford. Is that how you pronounce it, Wilbraham? Yeah. Wilbraham? I think so. I haven't honestly heard about it. The one-two. Called strike three on the inside. Ooh. Harris does not like that one. That's a tough call. I don't know if that one's in the zone. I don't know about that one. Very wide zone that we've seen here tonight, but that is out number one as Harris returns back to the dugout. Now Dom Johnson steps to the plate who went down swinging in his first appearance. Saw that nasty slider from Brett, Retra Brett Witrowski. There it is. Johnson coming off a night with a two-run home run. New batting gloves on. Sporting white gloves with that bright orange Nike swoosh, Nike check, some might call it. I don't know. I think I think the check is I think a check is the original word. I've always called it a swoosh. Yeah, either one. Count it one and zero now to Johnson. Johnson in 18 games has 14 hits. He's crossed base six. He's crossed home six times as he takes a heavy hack at that one but can't find it, one and one the count. And that one could have gone a mile if he would have found it. He was swinging out of his cleats there. That fastball came in on the inside, but he couldn't find it. Florence comes set, takes a long look at second base, comes home. That one misses for ball two. Florence making his second appearance of the season. Has two-thirds of an inning under his belt. He allowed one run, which was earned. Walked one and struck out two. The 2-1 finds the zone. Evens the count. Two balls and two strikes with one away now. Johnson looking for his first RBI of the night. Seen some speed from Mann over at second. We'll see if he can be knocked in. On a base hit here. Johnson, while Florence is in the, while For Florence prepares to come set, he holds the bat straight up, holds his hands near his chest. And as he comes set, he brings his hands up 
by his ear as the 2-2 comes in. That one gets past Mignus. Both runners will advance as Luke Mann now reaches third. Nick Romano is now on second and two Harbor Hawks in scoring position now for Dom Johnson. Well, that's a big pass ball that takes a double play away and takes a force at any base away as well. So now with runners down second and third, a good chance to add on. Count is full. Infield, closer than they would be usually. Harmon and Locklear near the grass. And Mar the Marcano twins, pretty close to even with second base, maybe a couple of feet behind it as the payoff pitch comes in. A swing and a miss from Johnson. He's down for the second time. Both times he's going down, we're on a pitch on the outside of the part of the plate. They're getting him to chase a little bit. And a big out number two for the Firebirds. Infield now moves back to their original positions. As Mitch Hardigan steps to the plate, he reached on a walk in his first appearance of the night. Has yet to register an, an at-bat. As the first pitch comes in. Now it finds his own for strike one. Hardigan came into this game with one, a 171 average, one RBI on the season. Florence now with his 13th pitch. Misses. Evens the count. One ball and one strike now. Pretty good sized crowd here at McKeon Park. It's a little quiet, but lots of crowds have lots of people have filed in for tonight's game from Orleans and Hyannis alike. The one one spiked in the dirt brings the count now to two balls and one strike. Quite a few fans past the Harbor Hawks dugout on that little hill near the Harbor Hawks bullpen down the third base line. Lots of lawn chairs tonight. Two balls and one strike to count to Hardigan. The pitch finds his own for strike two. Two balls and two strikes to count. I'm going to test something here, Austin. I went, went without it last time. It didn't work, so we'll see what happens. Lincoln's lucky hat is back. 2-2-2 two, two, two away. It's supposed to bring good luck to the Harbor Hawks. Hasn't really been lucky Emphasis the past few games. supposed to. Supposed to, yeah. <laughs> we'll see what happens here. The 2-2. Two, two. Grounded towards second. That's going to be picked up by Julio Marcano. Throw to first is in time for out number three. That's going to end the third inning of play as the Harbor Hawks maintain that 3-0 lead. But before... We go to the fourth. We're actually going to see a new episode of Meet the Harbor Hawk Monday. Y'all in three innings of work for you last night to close the game with a win. How'd that one feel? Welcome back to another episode of Meet the Harbor Hawks Monday. Today we asked some of our pitchers if they could eat one food for the rest of their life, what would it be? Angus McCluskey, if I had one food to eat for the rest of my life, it would be chips and guac. Cooper McKeon, if I had one food I had to eat for the rest of my life, I would definitely go with Chipotle. I'm uh, Rod Cooper here, definitely going to go with Chipotle for the rest of my life. Coach Corn? In honor of my last name, I would like a New York corn. Thank you. Hunter Furtado, I'd go with Chick-fil-A for the rest of my life. Yeah. I'm staying with the corn. <laughs> it's a back nine bully here. If I had one food to eat for the rest of my life, it would be Chipotle. Hi, I'm Agent Saravo, and one food I could eat for the rest of my life would be crab rangoons. Those are good. <laughs> That's all for this week's Meet the Harbor Hawks Monday. Make sure to tune back in next week for another episode. Here on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network, I'm Taylor Farmer. And another fantastic episode of Meet the Harbor Hawks Monday. And you can if you want to see more of that episode or our past episodes, you can actually check our YouTube page. All of those episodes will be right on there. As we're about to get underway here for the top half of the fourth inning, Pendleton chunks it on down to second. As the Firebirds get their fourth set of at-bats here. Trey Harmon going to start us off. Corey Acton on deck and Julio Marcano will be in the hole. 
as the five, six, and seven hole hitters come up for this top of the fourth inning. Harbor Hawks leading three to nothing against the Firebirds so far. Good to see them get out early and often and three runs is important. It's not enough in every game, so you need to continue to attack on. Three runs, three hits, no errors so far. Or excuse me, three runs, four hits, no errors for the Harbor Hawks so far. No runs, three hits, and no errors for the Firebirds. Clean defensive ball game between both teams. Seen a diving play from the Firebirds. That was Keyshaw making that grab. A beautiful catch, I might add. Count quickly on 0-2 now to Harmon. Harmon's one for one. Had a single, and he ended up reaching third in that appearance. So that pitch misses up high, brings the count to one and two. Saravo trying to get him on a high fastball, but it was too far up in the zone to get a, a Harmon chasing. See where he goes now on one, two. The pitch. Called strike three. <laughs> Harmon did not like that one. Well, the zone is wide tonight. Very wide zone as uh, that breaking ball wow. dropped well outside. Yeah. But it's been wide both ways. It has. It has. It's a very... I don't think anybody likes it, but it's been something that you can rely on. It, it yeah, it's been consistent, consistent so far. Now that's strikeout number one for Saravo as strike one comes across now to Corey Acton. Acton one for one as well had a double in the second. Now Harmon and Acton, the two runners that have reached the two runners that reached base in the second were left stranded on second and third. Saravo is working quickly here. Saravo already up 0 and 2. Here's the pitch. Just missing. He wanted it. He's getting the ball and going right back to the mound, wasting no time. Seems like he's getting in a little bit of a groove now. Already ready with the 1 2. Like Fouled off into the crowd. That's gonna keep the count at one and two. And the Harbor Hawks riders, who are just below the box here, have already brought out the canopy, anticipating a little bit of rain, as we've already had some for tonight. The Firebirds broadcast crew also with a tent, as that 1-2 misses up high, bringing the count even at 2. So two balls, two strikes, and one away now. As Acton fixes up his gloves, sporting some pink, pink batting gloves with that... Light gray barreled bat. That one misses for ball three. That gray barreled bat, very similar to Mitch Hardigan's bat. The middle of the handle's a little darker as there's a little bit more pine tar on that bat than on Hardigan's. The payoff from, from Saravo. Lofted down the third baseline. That's going to go foul just past the Harbor Hawks bullpen. Going to remain at 3-2. and two. Acton came into this game with a 176 average, only one RBI. Has three hits. So he lost that one foul once again. Acton with three hits, two of which were doubles. Now three doubles on the season for him. Been walked twice and has struck out eight times. The payoff. Lined at first and picked off by Nick Romano for out number two. Good contact, but just out in front of the breaking ball with a full count, and Romano was just positioned perfectly out there, and there's two away. Another reason that a lot of people both love and hate the game of baseball at the same time, because you can have a uh, Beautiful hard hit line drive like Acton did that just goes right to a defender. Meanwhile, the the person after you might have a little bloop hit off the end of the bat that ends up falling just over the head of somebody, and they end up with a single. Well, I told Marcano doesn't have that bloop single, but. <laughs> it is an unforgiving game. Very much so. I mean, in, in other sports, you can do everything right and fail, obviously, but I think yeah. baseball more than others. One and one the count. Saravo comes home. Misses. Brings the count now to two balls and one strike. Saravo almost through four innings. 
As we know, his longest outing so far has been five. Swung on and missed. Two balls and two strikes now. Now, based on what we've seen from Saravo right now, do you think that we can expect him to match that six-inning outing that we saw from um, that we saw last night? I'm not sure. I don't know what his pitch count's going to be. I know there's innings limits and pitch count limits for these guys, so I don't have enough information on what his is going to be to see if he'll match Scalaro. Now, Scalaro didn't throw a lot of innings at Florida State, which opens him up here in the summer to throw more. Now, Saravo did throw a lot of innings at Weatherford. Payoff is swung on and missed from Marcano. That ends the top of the fourth. Three up, three down from the Firebirds as the Harbor Hawks come up after this on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Bottom half of the fourth inning as Caleb Pendleton gets ready to start us off here. Lincoln Revel alongside my good friend Austin Dakota here for the bottom half of the fourth inning. The Harbor Hawks up three to nothing on the Orleans Firebirds right now. Pendleton one for one with a single in his last at bat in the second. Pitch from Florence that misses. One and oh the count. Pendleton came into tonight's game with a 137 average. That's gone up a bit as he swings at that one. Can't find it. One and one the count. Pendleton sporting a, I wouldn't call that quite a maroon color. It's a, it's a little darker than a maroon. Don't know what you'd call that, call that color. This is the 2-1. Comes in. Evens count two balls and two strikes. Now I am talking about his bat. He's sporting a, a very dark red barreled bat. As the 2 2 comes in. Called strike three. He Pendleton loves the goes outside down. corner. That one, a little bit outside Pendleton, let Burns know he didn't like the call. It's been called all night, I think was outside, but Sparky Burns is going to make that call. That's yeah, very easy to know. That Mr. Burns does love that outside pitch. First pitch comes in. That's a called strike to Ryan Romano. Count moves now to 0-1. Swing and a miss there. 0-2 the count. Romano with a sack fly in the second. That's not going to negatively affect his average. That's an RBI. The 0-2, a called strike three, another outside pitch. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Nathan Florence here in the fourth. It's going to be called. I mean, it is. That, that's it's That's the spot that Burns likes, and... He's been calling it all game, so I think the Harbor Hawk hitters are just going to have to try their best to foul it off, even if it's a weak dribbler down the line. Just try to fight it off because Florence is living on that spot now. Mm -hmm. Now that he knows it's going to be called, he is just peppering it. Yeah, the key to being an effective hitter is being able to adapt to every strike zone. And we know that 
Home plate umpire Sparky Burns loves that outside corner. So you got to be able to poke those outside pitches foul. That one pitch misses for ball one. One and one now the count to Elliott, who's 0 for 2 with a pair of flyouts. He hits the ball every time, it seems. I He struck out a little bit early on in his Cape uh, career as he joined the team a little bit late, but lately he's just been putting in the ball in play nearly every at-bat. He hasn't had a strikeout since the game against the Harwich Mariners back on the 16th. So he's gone a few days. And last night's game against the Commodores went two for five. One for five against the Chatham Anglers. And then the Mariners was the game where he had that strikeout in the sixth. But that was a swinging strikeout as this one bounces underneath the glove of David Marcano. That's going to go through for a single at least as the throw in from center can't be made in time. And that is Clark Elliott. Extending to second. And an unfortunate bounce from David Marcano. That looked like it was going to be a pretty routine play, but it turned out to go underneath his glove on a little bit of a dead bounce. Yeah, he did, tried to play it on the side rather than get in front of the baseball, and it did take a bad hop on him. Elliott gets a single for that, and I believe the rule of the bobble in center field an error, which allowed him to advance to second. We'll wait on the official score. Going to go down as a double for Elliott. So he's now right. one for three on the night. So a runner in scoring position, Kyle Ball at the plate. Ball batting 157, his on-base percentage at a 306. Swings and fouls that one off, 0-1 the count. I thought he would have had Elliott at second if he didn't bobble it. He would he, have. He, he hesitated, have. then started sprinting on the bobble. Yeah, good. It was a big turn, but I don't know if Elliott would have even ran if he filled it cleanly. No, definitely not, no. He would taken a wide turn, but... Seemed to have slowed up. Yeah, trying to get to second would have been a very gutsy attempt. He tries to get third now. Throw from Mignus down to third. Gets past Locklear. Elliott's going to get home, and that's going to score another run for the Harbor Hawks. Stolen base. Gets home on the error, and good base running by Elliott. He did stumble a little bit, and Elliott's going to score a run, and that just shows you how one guy can do it all sometimes. Mm -hmm. Gets himself on, and... Steals a bag, comes home on the error, and nice play there by Clark Elliott to manufacture a run. Very good awareness there from Elliott. High chopper over towards second. That's going to be picked up by Julio Marcano. Throw to first is in time. That's the third out. Harbor Hawks tack on one more, extending their lead to four to nothing now as we head to the fifth on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Top half of the fifth coming from Judy Walton Scarifile Field at McKeon Park. Lincoln Revel alongside Austin Akuda here. As Firebirds come back up to the plate. Do up for them is Justin Mickness, David Marcano, and Jeff Costello. As Mickness steps into the left-handed box. First pitch from Saravo comes in. That's flown and fouled. Heading just past the crowd here at McKeon Park. Somebody made a catch on that, I think. Really? He's holding it up proud. All right. Chance for a maybe a future Harbor Hawk there. I think he was about 40 years old. Oh, was he? <laughs> oh, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> so 
Stravo quickly with an 0-2 count now to Mickness. Pitch comes in, just missing on the outside. Saravo back on the mound for his fifth inning of work. If he can get through this inning, he'll match his season high as the 1 2 is lofted. That should stay playable for the infield as Kyle Ball is coming back. And he'll make the grab for out number one. Goes down as an F6 for those of you all keeping score at home. And now with one away, David Marcano. Steps up to the plate. Marcano's 0 for 1 on his night. His line includes a fly out to left. Saravo misses that one. Down low, that one hits the dirt. Bringing the count to 1 and 0 with one away. Another one spiked in the dirt. Two balls and no strikes now. There is action in the Harbor Hawks bullpen. We'll have that name for you here in just a few moments. And this one is going to be Sam Beck. That'll be his debut for the Harbor Hawks. Beck, one of the, have a multiple players that was just activated from the University of San Francisco. Count moves to three and one now to Marcano. David Marcano at shortstop, his brother Julio over at second. Stravo in the windup. Here's the three one. Grounded and fouled. Now it's going to be picked up by Beck as he's warming up. Being caught by Ryan Proto, the bullpen catcher for tonight's game. 3-2, foul tip is caught by Pendleton. That's out number two and another strikeout on the night for Adrian Saravo, who remains on fire. He's been great tonight. He allowed a couple of hits early in the ball game, but has now retired six in a row. Gets stronger as the game's going on. As you mentioned, six straight retired. Three of those have been strikeouts. So that one's lofted and fouled. Just underneath the nest of Osprey. Ospreys, you might say it is. Is Osprey plural or is that Ospreys? I don't know. I've never heard of an Osprey before coming here, but that one's Chopper down the third baseline, picked up by Mann. The throw to first on the run in time. A fantastical play from Luke Mann as that ends the top half of the fifth. Harbor, the uh, Firebirds go down in order. We head to the bottom half of the fifth on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Bottom half of the fifth inning is Luke Mann. It will start us off here, but before his at-bat gets underway, 
It's about that time of the game where we pass off play-by-play -play duties. So, Austin, my good friend, the mic is all yours. Thank you, Lincoln. Terrific job, as always. And the Harbor Hawks had some success while you were on the mic. Let's hope that continues. Hyannis leads the Firebirds 4-0. As it's man, Romano Harris due up. It's 3 4 5, the meet of the Harbor Hawks order. Called strike one on the breaking ball. Man already one for two tonight with a single. And he's behind that one, 0 2. Man had a great play just a few moments ago at the hot corner to finish off the top of the fifth. And we talked about it, Lincoln. He didn't have the ball hit his way in nine innings last night at Falmouth. The ball did not come to him once. The 0-2 to Luke Mann is swung on and missed. A fastball out of the zone. Gets Mann chasing, and there's one away. Good pitch there from Florence. Very good pitch, an appetizing high fastball. We've seen batters of plenty go down on that high cheese, but and Mann was one of them. He's now down with the strikeout twice in tonight's game. The fifth punch out by Florence, seventh between Florence and the starter, Wichrowski, who is chased after two innings. Two innings, three hits, three runs, three walks, two strikeouts for Rachowski tonight. Florence came on in relief in that third inning. We'll have to try to retire Nick Romano, who is ahead in the count 2-0. Romano making his debut tonight with the Harbor Hawks. He's one for one with an RBI single, a walk and a run scored, so he's reached base safely in both plate appearances. The 2-0 is belted high and deep to left. A mile high fly ball. It's gonna come back in a little bit. And the catch is made and left for out number two by Keyshaw. That ball was hit so high. <laughs> it was a loud fly out there. And we saw in his in one appearance that he had, I think it was his first at bat of the night, he sent one sailing well out, but it was a mile long. And that one looked like it was gonna go gonna go another mile, but sadly that was just a little too high, and Keyshaw was able to make that grab out and left. Two away, that brings up Zane Harris who takes a fastball at 89 miles per hour for ball one. Harris one for two with a single and a run scored on the night. The Wright State standout first baseman will look to continue on his solid week as he's behind on a fastball one and one. He's got a homer and six RBI on the season, does Harris. The 1-1 is fouled off and off the glove of Mickness behind the plate. The count is 1-2 and two with two away. Harris was a multi-sport athlete in high school. We talked to him a few days ago, learned he played basketball at the center slash power forward position. He said he could shoot the ball a little bit, but he was very dominant in the paint. Once he committed to Wright State, his basketball days were over. The 1-2 is a ball that misses. 2-2 two -two with two away. Does the hat officially retired, or do you dare try the good luck? Why don't you try it one more time? You want to try it one more time? Just, in, just, to, be, just right. to be sure that it's gone. It'll be a sad day when I have to retire the hat, <laughs> but it might be today. 2-2, two, two, two away. Lincoln has a good luck Harbor Hawk hat that he brings out when the Harbor Hawks are at the dish in that scenario. The 2-2 two, two to Harris. Breaking ball, and it misses. 3-2. Semi-success. Yeah, I guess <laughs> it'll live to see one more. Full count with two away. I have to say, if it doesn't work one more time tonight, I'm afraid I'm going to have to retire the old boy. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. The 3-2 on its way from Florence. A fastball, and Harris gets under it a bit, flies it to right field. Moving in on it and making the catch is Costello to end the inning as the Harbor Hawks go down in order in the bottom of the fifth. Top of the six on its way in just a moment on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network.
Sixth inning from Judy Walden Scare File Field at McKean Park, ready to begin as Adrian Saravo gets back on the mound looking to match the outing from Jonas Scalaro last night, who also went six in the start and got the win for Hyannis. Scalaro went six innings, allowing just the one run and striking out ten. Saravo coming into the inning through five, has allowed no runs on three hits. That was pitch number 74, which finds the zone for a strike. So he's been efficient, Lincoln, through those five innings. He has. He's been fantastic. As you mentioned, no runs on three hits. And he's just putting together a couple of great for, great last outings. He's going to have to cut through the meat of the Firebirds order here in the top of the six. It's 2-3-4. Keyshaw, DeLauder, and Locklear do up for Orleans. Now with a couple of... There are about two weeks left in the season. And with pitchers getting about four days worth of rest, it'll be interesting to see. Do you think... And we might end up seeing some seven-inning, eight-inning outings from Scalaro and Saravo, do you think? Or? I don't know. I think it depends on what their colleges want to see. That's true. They yeah. do have innings limit, which Adrian mentioned to me mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. We were talking about that, and he said, you know, there's games where I'm only going three because I you know, have a certain amount of innings I throw in a year. I can't get that out of the way at this point. He yeah. threw a decent amount in college at Weatherford, and now comes here in the summer, he can't go seven every game because he'd hit that limit yeah. in week two, I think. No, I think he said that the inning limit is 120? Right about, right I about, believe, yeah. 100 to 120. We'll see where he's at after tonight's game on the season between here and Weatherford. He threw a no-hitter at Weatherford as well. He had a, a sensational season. The 1-2 from Saravo popped foul out of play. The count will hold where it is at 1-2. and two. Keyshaw looking to get on base to lead off the inning for the Firebirds who are still in search of their first run of the ball game. Zeros across the first five. Saravo would like to make it six. Keyshaw had a very unfortunate first at bat. We'll see if he can get on base here. The 1-2 is lined into the left center field gap for a base hit. Hardigan will cut it off and it's a leadoff single for Keyshaw. who has reached base safely for the second time in the ball game adding on to his walk in the third. Now, I do have to say, as sad as I am to see a hit for the Firebirds here, I will say I'm glad, I, I'm glad to see Keyshaw get that redemption after going down in such an unfortunate way back in the first. A double play, ran into the umpire at first. Mm -hmm. So it's nice, Emerson. To, it's nice to see him get that chance on first base after being sort of ripped off from that back in the first after colliding with Rick Emerson. Nobody out, runner on first, brings up Chase DeLauder. Time is called as a... Baseball from the Harbor Hawks bullpen has sailed onto the field. Luke Mann outraces the bat boy for it. Sam Beck still warming up, awaiting his debut. Kishal on first does have a stolen base on the night. He's a danger to run over there. Saravo comes set. Long pause from the right-hander. Fires home, and that one is a called strike. It finds the outside corner. A long pause by Chase DeLauder as he didn't like that call. And the Firebirds dugout is letting Sparky Burns know they don't like that call. Saravo so comes set once more. The 0-1 on its way. That one outside. 1-1 one -one the count. I have to say, I feel like both teams are probably not very happy with the with some of the calls tonight, but like we've mentioned, it's it's a consistent zone. It's been both ways. Yes, they might not be strikes, but they're not strikes for either of you. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 1-1 one, one the count. Saravo, long pause, fires. That one is lined softly to center field. Elliott's running after it. It's going to drop for a base hit. Back-to-back -back singles for the Firebirds who are looking to put something together here in the top of the sixth. Good piece of hitting there from Lo from DeLauder, being able to loft that one just a bit to the right of Elliott. And just keep this inning going with no way in now a runner in scoring position. Double play is in order, and Saravo's had success against Locklear. He's got him to ground out twice, once to third, once to the pitcher, Saravo. Now the infield fly roll comes into effect with runners on first and second. All bags are hot. On the on the force play, big chance for a double play here. 
Saravo so comes set here as the first pitch to Locklear awaits. That one misses, low and inside, 92 on the fastball, 1-0. and oh. For just joining us, Austin Dakota and Lincoln Revel here with you in the booth as the Harbor Hawks lead the Orleans Firebirds 4-0 here in the top of the six. There are runners on first and second for the visiting Firebirds with nobody out. The 1-0 from Saravo. Fastball finds the zone, 1-1 one, one the count. Good job from Saravo. Still going strong, and he's been able to paint that inside corner there for that first strike. Saravo, an avid Blue Jays fan from New Hampshire. Must be excited about their success this season as that one has flown to center field. Elliott's back on it. A few steps in front of the warning track, makes the catch. As Keyshaw tags up going second and third, so they do get an out. A runner advances to double play still in order as DeLauder stays at first. Good first out there. You didn't want Keyshaw to extend over to third, but that's kind of out of your control as that one was lofted a little too deep. But so still a good first out and a chance for a double play to end it. With one away, pitching coach Ray Korn will head to the mound to talk to Saravo for the second time tonight. We're not going to see a pitching change here as for pitching changes, Gary Calhoun usually makes his way out to the mound. So I think this is going to be the one last time we see Korn come out to talk to Saravo before his night is done. Talk with Pendleton, the catcher, and Saravo, the pitcher, as they look to work their way out of this top of the six. Runners on the corners for Orleans. It could get dangerous with one swing of the bat. Saravo does a good job at limiting the long ball. Harmon due up at the conclusion of the mound visit. Trey Harmon is one for two today with a single and a strikeout looking. Sparky Burns announcing that was the second conference. Thank uh, you, Sparky. We'll mark that down. Harmon gets ready to dig in. Saravo looking to work himself out of danger and keep the shutout through six. One away in the inning. The hits are even between these two teams at five. The runs are not as Hyannis leads it four to zero. First pitch from Saravo to Harmon. Called strike at the knees, 0-1. Now, we, you mentioned earlier how dominant Saravo was at Weatherford College this past season. 15 games he played, he started, and with an 8-3 record in 76 and two-thirds innings, he struck out 103. The ball misses the bat when he's on the mound. The count 1-1. One, one. That one may have caught Caleb Pendleton a bit on the hand. Or I think he may have jammed his finger as he slid to block it. Oof. Seems to be okay. Caleb Pendleton, we've seen in past games, he's been hit with the ball a few too many times to count, bruised and battered after a couple of outings. He has taken his lumps behind the dish this season. The 1-1. One, one. Called strike one, two. Good spot here for Saravo as he battles back. We've seen this spot before where it's been a runner in on third with one away. That second out here is of utmost importance. Glances uh, at the runner and DeLauder at first. DeLauder leaning towards second. He goes. The one, two. Swing and a miss. The throw to second is... In time! Strike him out, throw him out, inning over. Saravo emphatically picks up his hat on the mound as he's through six scoreless. The Harbor Hawks maintain a 4-0 to lead as we head to the bottom of the six on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network.
Back here for the bottom of the six. Dom Johnson, Mitch Hardigan, Caleb Pendleton do up for Hyannis. Hyannis leads it four to zero. Austin Dakota Lincoln Revel here with you in the booth as Johnson digs in to face Florence. First pitch, a breaking ball, a called strike. Very low in the zone, but low enough, I guess, in the strike zone part. Like we've said so many times, it's an extremely wide strike zone here. And you know, that shows how well these batters can adapt because it's not... The umpire doesn't have to change his zone, no matter how much you don't like it. It's your job to adapt to his zone and try to get hits... In, get hits no matter what the zone is. 0-2 the count to Johnson. Saravo heads to the bullpen as his day may be done. We'll see. The 0-2. That one misses. 1-2 the count. Johnson is 0-2 tonight with a pair of punch outs. Would like to avoid the third. Defense remains the same for Orleans. The Marcano brothers up the middle at second and short. Locklear at third. Harmon at first. The 1-2 to Johnson's in the dirt. Past the catcher, Mickness. And left is Keyshaw in center, DeLauder, and right, Costello. As the Firebirds look to battle their way back into this ballgame. Deep breath from Florence on the mound. He winds up and fires the 2-2 for a called strike three. Johnson knew it as he turns and walks back to the dugout. And there's one away. Good pitch from Florence there to start this inning off. And like you said, Johnson knew that pitch was in the, in the zone. He didn't hesitate, just turned and started his way back to the dugout, and there's one away now. That brings up Mitch Hardigan with one away. Hardigan 0 for 1 with a walk tonight. <laughs> Called strike to Hardigan. He should not, nods, nods his head, rather, in approval of the call. The 0 1. That misses. 1 1 the count. Hardigan staying this summer in Sagamore Beach, just over the Sagamore Bridge here, right near the canal. The 1-1 is fanned, 1-2. About 25 minutes here from Hyannis. The home of the Harbor Hawks. Players get to the field every day about 3 o'clock to get ready for batting practice. I hope he lives on the Cape side of the bridge. No, it's just over the bridge. Ooh, that could be... Not too bad coming over in that area. Rather yeah. than the Bourne's a little tougher, I think, in the summer, but there can be traffic at both. It says it's not too bad. I've run into traffic a few times crossing the crossing the Sagamore Bridge to mainland, but I've never hit traffic going coming back. Speaking of hits, Hardigan hits that one up the middle for a base hit, and he reaches with one away. That one may have gone between the legs of Nathan Florence. He did a good job of avoiding that one, and a good strong. Base hit for Mitch Hardigan. That'll bring up Caleb Pendleton, who is one for two with an RBI single tonight. Florence has already thrown three and a third in relief. Three hits, one unearned run, and six punch outs. There is action in the Orleans bullpen. Another right hander begins to throw. And more action in the Harbor Hawks bullpen as they also have a right-hander throwing. It looks like it's still Sam Beck. We will confirm. The 1-0 on its way to Caleb Pendleton. Big cut and a miss. 1-1 one, one the count. Bottom of the six. The Harbor Hawks looking to add on. Person in the bullpen for the Firebirds is Jeffrey Prommel. The 1-1 Pendleton shows bunt, pulls back, it's a ball, 2-1. Third baseman Locklear playing very deep over there. Pendleton can, can drop one down the third baseline. He might be looking at runners on first and second. 2-1 with one away. Soft grounder down the third baseline, but foul as the count evens up at 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that I don't think Pendleton's going to try to lay a bunt down with a two-strike count. I've seen it. I've seen it before, and I'm always confused as to why people would think to do that with two strikes. If it goes foul with two strikes on a bunt, and you're out. 
considered a strikeout. It's just too big a risk to take, in my opinion. The 2-2 to Pendleton. Ground ball hard, hits a third backhand, and it takes a heck of a bounce off of Locklear. So Pendleton will reach base safely. We'll see if it's ruled a hit or an error. It will be an error on Locklear at third. And E5 allows Pendleton to reach base. Did take a bad hop on him over there. Mm -hmm. I will say that's a little bit of a... That's a hard call to make because, like you said, it did take a bad bounce. Usually that would be a routine play. That's a tough error. Mm -hmm. It is. He did scorch that ball, and he played it right. You're going to backhand that. But it took a hop that avoided that from being a routine play. So I would think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Without the hop, it would have been a pretty routine play to make because just, he just had to scoot over and backhand it. Right. But because of that bad hop, yeah, that turns out to be a pretty difficult play to make. That brings up Ryan Romano with still one away. Runners on first and second for Hyannis. The pitch on its way. Romano reaches and fouls that one off. 0-2 the count. And all the foul balls tonight that are hit are able to be kept by the fans as souvenirs. Thanks to the foul ball sponsor, Honeydew Donuts. We didn't. Uh, we saw quite a few foul balls in last night's game that weren't able to be taken home because of the police department that stand that sits next to Falmouth Falmouth's baseball field. Right. If they go into the police department parking lot, they're not able to be retrieved. Mm -hmm. There's also some bushes behind home plate too, the woods. Oh yeah. They go into that, so there's not as many foul ball opportunities at Falmouth mm -hmm. as there are here at McKeon Park. No, the woods out in uh, in. It's not Brewster. Why, am, why is the name blanking Harwich? on me? Harwich. It is Harwich, yes. Yeah, the woods at Harwich, they're, they're thick. They're pretty thick woods, but, you know, it's not like the thick brambly brush that you see. And so the kids and other fans are able to sprint out into the woods to try to grab themselves a ball. Goff moved his second. It is just a deke as Hardigan dives back without a throw. 0-2 awaits to Ryan Romano, who is 0-1 for with a sack fly as well and an RBI. He went down looking on strikes in his last at-bat. Would like to drive in another run here and add to the 4-0 lead for Hyannis. The 0-2 is in the dirt for a ball, 1-2. and two. Breaking ball at 78, couldn't find the zone. Now, is it me? I don't think I've ever seen this before. It kind of seems like we have an overcast sky here at McKeon Park. It kind of seems like the clouds are sporting a little bit of a, like a light purple tint. Does it? Do you notice that? I don't know if I, a little bit. I've never seen that before. The one two is Romano swings and can't connect with a breaking ball as he goes down on strikes for out number two. Good breaking ball there from Florence. Romano with a chance for an RBI, but he can't connect with that last pitch as he goes down swinging. Second strikeout of the inning for Florence and the second out. That'll bring up Clark Elliott as we're back to the top of the order. Elliott manufactured that fourth run nearly on his own as he doubled, stole third, and came home on the throw down to third, which leaked into left field. That was a fourth run scored by Hyannis tonight. Elliott is one for three. First pitch to Elliott is a fastball that misses at the eye level for a ball, 1-0. and oh. Yeah, Elliott out of the... Players that were brought in before, just a few days to just a few days ago, now sporting one of the highest on-base percentages in the fewest amount of games. Second on the team in OBP, first in batting average at 3.08 coming into the ball game. The only one beating him is Ryan Proto, who has played up to this point four games less. It'll be now five as Elliott getting his 11th game. Proto spending this one in the bullpen tonight. Proto leading an OBP on the team. Elliott the batting average leader. Mound visit here for the Fireburns as a dangerous spot. 2-0 to Clark Elliott with runners on first and second. Yeah, Elliott, like you said, leading an average. 
Now, Ryan Proto, not too far behind him. Of course, Proto, like I said, has a significant number of fewer at-bats. Elliott with 39, and Proto with only 17 at-bats on the season. Two zero to Clark Elliott. You know, I have to say, we've we've talked a lot about Sparky Burns behind the plate and his involvement in tonight's game. I like how assertive he is. Almost, he he, you know that he's the man in charge. He's letting you know everything that's happening. He's very vocal in every call that he makes. He's just been, even though he has that wide zone, I think he's doing a good job tonight, really. He's been very been very consistent with his zone, no matter how outside or inside we may think it is. Yeah, no question if one is a ball or a strike, as he makes it known, and it's ball four. Elliott draws a four-pitch walk, which loads the bases now for Kyle Ball. Ball on the day is 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. He's a patient hitter. Makes a lot of contact. Leads the team in walks. And doesn't strike out as much as some of his teammates. 14 walks on the year. Now 15, including the one earlier tonight. Two outs in the inning. Base is loaded. Pitch from Florence is a breaking ball that nearly hits Kyle Ball. And it's a ball 1 and 0 <laughs> continue with the with the wouldn't say those are ball puns <laughs> it just happens be. to have the yeah, same last fancy, name as the object that's fancy word in usage game. yeah the 1 0 is outside 2 and 0 if you're Kyle here in this account maybe you're just kind of waiting I mean, oh, he yeah. just walked Elliot on four pitches he's thrown two straight to you there's nowhere to put you any time after a four-pitch walk, you are I'd say you're at a hard red light until you see that first strike cross the plate. Florence comes set, take a deep breath, the 2-0. Finds the zone 2-1, and one, and that's a little outside and high, but finds the corner. Florence gets the sign from Mickens. 2-1. In the dirt, 3-1. and one. McNiss has done a good job behind the plate tonight, keeping the ball in front of him. The base is loaded here. A pass ball could have been fatal. Now if a pass ball is almost likely ball four anyway, so mm -hmm. run come home. 3-1 the count to Kyle Ball. Nowhere to put him here with the bases loaded. The pitch on its way. Ball four. And Florence walks in a run as Hyannis adds another. Their lead grows to 5-0. to zero. Well, it's not the ideal way that you'd want to score a run, but hey, a run is a run is a run. And now the Harbor Hawks with, make their lead a little bit more comfortable with a 5 nothing lead. And that'll lead to a pitching change here at McKeon Park as Florence's day is done. Hyannis leads it 5-0 to zero on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network.
Back here for the remainder of the bottom of the six. The Harbor Hawks already have one. Bases loaded for Luke Mann as a new pitcher on the mound. Jeffrey Prommel, the right-hander, toes the rubber and looks to work out a danger for his team. Luke Mann, the guy you want up. He's had a pair of homers in the last week of play. Has a single tonight. First pitch to Mann. Goes after a changeup below the zone, 0-1. Oh excited fan, I guess that is, or somebody <laughs> from the dugout, I can't see exactly where it's coming from, but somebody's excited. There was somebody doing a pretty good, great deal of yelling for Saravo when he was on the mound, but still have yet to see who that is. It he sounds like he's coming from the Orleans side, yeah. or that that one is at least. The first one came from the hi from the Hyannis side. Maybe he moved seats. He might have. Count 0-2 to Luke Mann after the fastball called strike on the inside part of the plate. Promo comes out of the bullpen, and it's one strike away from working out of the bases loaded. Gets the signs from McNiss, the 0-2. That misses. A fastball that sailed a bit on him. One and two. I've seen this quite a bit as where the bases become loaded with, you know, one out, two outs, and we're unable to really produce anything from that bases loaded jam. The one two. Man lines that one softly to center field. It's going to get down for a base hit. Pendleton scores. They're waving around Elliott. It's a two RBI single for Luke Mann, and the Hawks extend their lead. It's seven to zero. Well, a fantastic bit of hitting. I think that's a little shorter than Mann wanted it, but plopped just in the middle of the Marcano twins and DeLauder out in center field, and a perfect piece of hitting as that brought in two runs. Three runs home in the inning, seven on the night. The Harbor Hawks look for back-to-back -back wins for the first time this season. Still a lot of ball game left, but a 7-0 lead is impressive against a very solid Orleans team who came into the ball game at 8, 9, and 4. Nick Romano back at the plate as he checks his swing. It's called strike anyway, 0-1. Romano, 1 for 2 with a single, an RBI, a walk, and a run scored as he's making quite the debut tonight for Hyannis. The 0-1. Ground ball to first. Picked up there by Harmon. He steps on the bag to end the inning. The Hawks strike for a three. The lead has swelled to 7-0 to here from McKeon. Back for the seventh in just a moment. Back here for the seventh inning. Before we get started, a word from our sponsor, Milton Cat. For sales and rentals of Caterpillar machinery, generators, and marine engines, 
Visit MiltonCat.com, your area cat dealer. Milton Cat, the Cape and Islands Caterpillar dealer, is proud to be a sponsor of today's game. New pitcher on the mound for the Harbor Hawks, making his season debut is Sam Beck, a right-hander from San Francisco, transferring there from Lynn. Beck will have to do battle with 6 7 8 for the Firebirds, Acton, Marcano, and Mickness. Harbor Hawks lead at 7-0. Austin Dakota, Lincoln Revel here with you in the booth. Beck from Warren, New Jersey, spending his summer here with Hyannis. That one's lined to right field for a leadoff single for Acton, his second hit of the night. Good piece of hitting from Acton. He has a double and a single to his night now. And a good start here in the seventh for the Firebirds. Leadoff man is on for Julio Marcano, the second baseman. His twin brother, David, in the nine hole today. Beck will have to work from the stretch now with the leadoff man on. First pitch to Julio. He gets him to chase in the dirt, 0-1. Now Samuel Beck. From San, Fran San Francisco coming there from Lynn, as Austin mentioned earlier. He had eight appearances for the Fighting Knights this past season. Three saves and 19.2 innings pitched, a 4.12 ERA overall, and had 17 strikeouts. And a strike is called as that one gets away from Pendleton, so advancing is act into second. The line is closed on Adrian Saravo, who was Terrific once again. Six innings pitched, five hits, no runs, two walks, and three punch outs. As Saravo has been sensational. Just one run across his last 11 innings. The count, one, two. Beck will step off and look the runner acting back to second. Quiet night here at McKeon Park. The crowd started off pretty sizable. Has dwindled just a bit in the latter half of the ball game. The one two called strike three. Beck picks up the punch out with a fastball on the outside part of the plate and there's one away. There's that outside corner that we've seen called so many times tonight and Beck seems to have found that right off the bat. So you're going to live if you're a pitcher in this ball game. It's oh, just yeah. the outside corner. Yeah, it's you so tough for guys to hit, and they're just not used to swinging at it, but it's being called all night. Yeah, you know that you're going to you know you're going to get calls if you find that outside zone, so pound it as much as you can. Nice block by Pendleton as the first pitch to Mickness is a fastball in the dirt. 1 and 0. Oh. McNiss on the night, 0 for 2, a ground out and a pop-up on the line for the catcher. Mentioned Lincoln how earlier in the game how Adrian Saravo's favorite team is the Toronto Blue Jays. They are behind the Boston Red Sox, currently 11 to 0. Yikes. And the Red Sox also have the bases loaded, and it's still the top of the second inning. Oh, man. The top of the second? Top of the second. Holy. Bases loaded. They have a home run from Kike Hernandez. Jaron Duran, a former Cape Leaguer, with a two-run blast. For the Red Sox, Rafi Devers has hit a home run. Hunter Renfo has a grand slam. So the Red Sox are oh. off to a great start tonight. Holy cannoli. Good Jaron grief. Duran making his debut with Boston, as mentioned, the former Cape Cod baseball player. So many guys now just making their debuts this season that everywhere you look, it's a Cape leaguer doing something great. Pete Alonzo, former born Braves player, won the home run derby. Shamanaya, a former Harbor Hawk was the AL Pitcher of the Month a month ago. An all-star. The Harbor Hawks had seven players drafted in the 2021 draft, five players from the 2019 team drafted, and one signed, so a total of 13 Harbor Hawks are now on MLB teams, or organizations, I guess, in the minors. As that one missed, it's a walk to Mickens, which puts runners on first and second with one away. The runners on first and second with one away, testing out. We're going to see just how good Beck is 
with some pressure on his arm here. David Marcano at the plate. Chance for a double play as the infield flies in effect. All bags are hot. Harbor Hawks have turned the double play tonight. It was a 6-4-2-3 double play. First pitch called strike to David Marcano. Mar David Marcano over two. Back comes set in his Cape League debut, the 0-1. That misses one and one, the count to the righty. I would do it myself. Sam Beck, when he's not playing baseball, his hobbies are golfing and fishing. Yeah. Lots of golfers that we've seen. It's a fun sport. It is, it is. It's a nice little peaceful time. I, every time I go golfing, it's a nice time for me to just get Ooh. get out of my own head, you know? Peaceful is not the way I would describe really? my, my <laughs> golf experiences. It's a lot of frustration. Well, yeah, that, that's, for, in, that's in the mix as well. For yeah. me, fishing's more peaceful. Mm. Fishing is too peaceful for me. There's is no it? action, you know? <laughs> well, if, you fi if you're a good fisherman, there might be some action. Well, then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. With that, ex me. that explains it. <laughs> There yeah. are slow days on the pond. Very much, yeah. I know a lot of the guys here go fishing, kayaking in their off day. Yep. Usually just one off day a week for these players. You know, kayaking I can get under. I can get with. I love kayaking. Mm -hmm. I've gone uh, rafting before, whitewater rafting. Very fun A good to time. Do. Yeah, so much fun. I almost fell out of the boat, but or the raft. Harbor Hawks having a good time tonight. Ahead 7-0 on the Firebirds. The 1-2 on its way. It's low in the zone. 2-2 the count. It's interesting to hear how a lot of these guys spend their off day. Mm-hmm. Just one a week, typically, pending any rainouts or schedule changes. We had a stretch of eight games in a row scheduled with a switch in the off day, but no more Thursday games, which means all off days as Beck retires Marcano swinging for a big out number two. Most of them still work out on their off day. Some go fishing, kayaking, golfing, relax, play MLB the show, <laughs> a plethora of I ideas and things to do on their days off. Yeah, according to a lot of the players, any rain out that we have, any ca game cancellations result in a night full of the show. <laughs> MLB The Show is the most popular game right now amongst these guys. By far. It's a it's a great game. It's fun to it's fun to play, especially the Diamond Dynasty mode. That's my favorite. Yeah, very fun. I uh let's see, before I left for here actually, I had a game I had a team on a Diamond Dynasty team that was uh, I modeled the uniforms after my college North Texas. Uh-huh. And I, f I found the logo on the game, actually. So oh, I went really? ahead and m m uh, put that in there onto my jerseys. A swing and a miss. That ball gets past Pendleton to the backstop as runners advance. Now it's second and third with two away. Might have to make some Harbor Hawk uniforms when you get back home. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, the fun thing about the show, you can do almost anything with it. I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that you can't make a... Like, you can't make your own stadium to go with your own team? I think you can do that on the PS5 and the next generation consoles. Really? I've seen it done. I'm not a hundred. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that's what they allow. Well, then I that. only have a PS4. I don't have the next generation stuff. BO2 popped up. Pendleton doesn't see it. He's going to go give it a look towards the backstop. It's out of play. Count will hold at 0-2. Well, I think after hearing that, it's definitely in the cards for me. I need to go ahead and buy me a PS5. The count is 0-2 with two away to Jeff Costello. The 0-2. Cut on and miss. Beck works his way out of danger. And the side is retired. Still zeros on the board for Orleans. We head to the bottom of the seventh. Back in a moment on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network.
The seventh inning stretch has concluded here at McKeon Park. Austin Dakota and Lincoln Revel in the booth as the Harbor Hawks look to add on to their 7-0 lead. Orleans has put the ball in play a great deal tonight, Lincoln, with six hits. They're just trailing the Harbor Hawks in hits by one. They've made some, some, some sensational plays defensively, but unfortunately the run's the difference in this ballgame. Yeah, with all of the hits that the Firebirds have been putting in tonight's game, it's pretty impressive to see still that zero underneath the error column for the Harbor Hawks so far tonight. Lots of great putouts from that defense. Count 1 0 to Zane Harris as Jeffrey Prommel back on the hill. The 1 0. Harris pops it up. The Marcano brothers battle for it, but it's the shortstop, Julio, or David rather, who makes the call and the catch for out number one. I'm sure neither of them are too interested in giving up the ball to their other. No, definitely not, no. You want a little bit more for that one. Yeah, I know that if I was playing with my with my brother, not even a twin, he's three years younger than I am, but if I was playing on if I was in the middle with him, we'd be battling for every ball. And I'm sure that the Marcano twins that rivalry, a friendly rivalry of rivalry of course, probably a little bit more heated. Trying to one up the other one. Jeffrey Prommel from SNHU as Dom Johnson squares around and lays down a bunt. It's a pretty decent one. The throw from third is not in time, and it sails into right field. Johnson is on his horse heading for second. He'll stop there as he reaches on the bunt. We'll see what it's ruled officially. It might be a single and an error. A single for Johnson on the bunt. It was a good one in between the pitcher and third, but he advances on the throwing error from Locklear, who sailed it over first. So runner in scoring position for Hyannis. Well, quite honestly, that ball went far enough towards the Firebirds' bullpen that I think that if Johnson would have chosen to run the third, he probably would have gotten there in time. He stopped up at second base, and then a couple seconds after he stopped, then the ball came in to the infield. So I think he could have been at third safely. But Jeff still a safe decision to stay at second, of course. Jeffrey Prommel from SNHU, one of the studs. At that SNHU team this season, he was a starter, firing 70 and two-thirds innings pitched with a 3.82 ERA. A terrific year there, adding 84 punch-outs. The 0-1 is lined back up the middle for a base hit for Mitch Hardigan. Rounding third, heading home is Dom Johnson as the Hawks add another thanks to an RBI single from Mitch Hardigan. Well, Mitch Hardigan's bat has come on fire tonight. He's reached base three times on a walk and a pair of singles, now an RBI single, and he's having a really, really great night tonight. Hardigan has woken up his bat a bit. He's had a couple of doubles this year, but now putting the ball in play. That'll bring up Caleb Pendleton. Hardigan's Florida Atlantic teammate as they bat back to back in the order. Prommel on the hill. Came in relief as a third pitcher we've seen tonight from the Firebirds. Nice pitch there from Prommel as he fires a slider, it looked like, that got Pendleton reaching in the outside part of the plate. It was Wichrowski who got the start. Florence came in relief. He allowed just one earned run in three and two thirds. The 0 1 to Pendleton. That misses, and it's one and one. And now Prommel on the mound. Two thirds of an inning so far. Three hits, one run. Responsible for Hardigan at first after a single. Prommel comes set. And Pendleton can't catch up with that one as he is trying to reach for that breaking ball. One and two. 1-2 with one away. Harbor Hawks lead it 8-0. Firebirds have had a few chances as Pendleton ropes that one into left for a base hit. Hardigan will hold it second as a throw in from left field. Nearly got Hardigan on the turn, but he's in safely. That was a scary play there at second base. Hardigan almost coming a little too far off of second, but he was able to get his foot in there just in time. And now another runner in scoring position for Ryan Romano. Second hit of the night for Pendleton who stands at first. 
Ryan Romano digs in. He's 0 for 2 with a pair of punch outs, but he does have a sack fly RBI. That came all the way back in the bottom of the second inning. Harbor Hawks scored two in the bottom of the second, one in the bottom of the third, one in the bottom of the fourth. As Romano grounds that one hard to third. Step on the bag for one throw across the diamond is not in time as it can't be dug out. But they do get the lead base runner at third. Good effort from Locklear. That was almost a good double play there from Locklear at third. He threw it after stepping on third base, throw out while off balance to Harmon. And Harmon almost with a good dig at first base, but just couldn't get with it as that ended up going in and out of his glove. That'll bring up the top of the order in the form of Clark Elliott. Elliott's one for three with a double. He's also reached base on a walk. He scored two runs and stole the base. Doing his job in the leadoff spot would like to get on one more time and extend the lead a bit. Prama looks at the runner at second in Pendleton. First pitch to Elliott is a ball 1-0. and About two and a half hours into this ball game, Hyannis with eight runs, ten hits, no errors. Orleans, no runs, six hits, three errors. One of the best all-around ball games for the Harbor Hawks this season. As that one's grounded back up the middle, a base hit for Elliott. They're going to wave home Pendleton. The throw from center field is offline, and it's an RBI single for Clark Elliott as the Hawks add another. It's 9-0. to Well, all right. I have to say, I am not disappointed in this inning at all. A couple more runs hacked on here and there. And an even more, uh, I have to say, I dare say a comfortable lead with a 9 nothing <laughs> lead here against the Firebirds. The Firebirds are a good offense. <laughs> the Firebirds with six hits in the ball game. See if they can put up a late rally as Kyle Ball is back at the plate. Two away, Ball grounds it. In between third and short, it's a base hit. They're gonna wave home Romano, who goes around the third base coach, Travis Poole. And it's an RBI single for Kyle Ball. It's 10-0. to zero. Did you see Romano, Lincoln, on that rounding of third? He had to go all the way around his third base coach. He was waving <laughs> him home. Well, I guess that's what I guess if you don't if you just have that much speed as Romano does, you just gotta do what you can. As long as he didn't collide with them, I think we're good, and he didn't, as he was able to come home. And now an even further lead for the Harbor Hawks and We've been They're just finding the areas of the Firebirds defense where there's no defender. Mm -hmm. Ball in between short and third, one up the middle. Had a few ripped up the middle. And now a hot hitter, Luke Mann at the plate. Mann on the ball game is two for four, two singles and two RBI. Three home in the inning for the Harbor Hawks who lead it 10 to zero, their biggest lead at any point this season. First pitch to Luke Mann. Big cut, and he can't connect. 0-1. Promel has done his job throwing strikes out of the bullpen. Harbor Hawks have put it in play. It was an error in the inning, which allowed Dom Johnson to go to second on a bunt single. Clark Elliott on second. Kyle Ball on first. Both of them with RBI singles in the inning. The 0-1 to Luke Mann, he rips that one foul. That will send the Firebirds dugout fleeing to the back half of the dugout. 0-2. <laughs> Firebirds making the trip from Orleans to Hyannis. A little bit of a longer commute. We'll be making the trip to Orleans here within the next couple of weeks. The one time we'll meet at Orleans, which I have to say I'm a little disappointed we won't see that field more than one time. It's a very beautiful field there. The 0-2 to Luke Mann. Breaking ball. Mann got a hold of this one. He rips it to right, and it is gone! A three-run home run from Luke Mann as he hits his third homer of the week. The lead extends for Hyannis to 13-0. You know, I have to say, this feels good. Now 13 to nothing game. A fantastic game for the Harbor Hawks offensively and a fantastic game for Luke Mann, who, as you mentioned, his third home run of the week. High fives going around the press box as Hyannis 
Adds three. Man homered back at Bourne. That was last that last Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Then we came home. He added a three-run blast here on Friday. And now three runs come home. Today on Monday, Luke Mann on fire. 13 runs, 13 hits, six runs home in the inning. The Harbor Hawks bats have come alive. Now the player of the week for the Cape, that that is announced on Thursday, is it not? Not 100% sure. I know Brock Wilkin got the honors about a week ago. Mm -hmm. We'll see who it is this week. Luke Mann, if, I, if he's not Cape League player of the week. Somebody else must be having an all-time week. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Luke yeah. Mann is having an all-time week, but if he doesn't get it, there must be somebody out there just doing incredible things. I know a couple of guys have swung a hot bat. The 2-1 to Romano. That one's hit on the ground hard and foul. 2-2 two, two the count. 2-2, two, two, two away, Lincoln. If there's a chance to bring out the hat, I mean, and now would be the time. Yeah, let's try it. See what goes. It worked last time. It's one for two on the night. The ninth see batter who has come to the plate this inning for Hyannis in the form of Nick Romano as he looks to extend the inning a bit. 13-0 for Hyannis. Romano is one for three on the night with an RBI. The 2-2 misses. 3-2 the count. The bat lives to see another pitch, I guess you could say. <laughs> or the hat, that is. 3-2, two, two away. Prom will come set. Gets the signs. Mickness and cut on and miss. The inning is over. Germano goes down swinging. The Harbor Hawks send nine batters to the plate and score six. A couple of RBI singles and a three-run blast by Luke Mann has extended the lead to 13-0 here on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Back here for the eighth inning as the Harbor Hawks have jumped out to a 13-0 lead now. Sam Beck back on the hill for his second inning of work in relief of Adrian Saravo. Austin Dakota Lincoln Rebel here with you in the booth as the Harbor Hawks to put together a little two-game winning streak. First time this season they would win back-to-back -back games if they can hold off the Firebirds here. Now do you, I dare say, judging by this game and last night's game, I'd say... We have a little saying, the Hawks are hot. The Hawks may be hot once more. The count is 1-1 to Luke Keyshaw from San Francisco. So he'll do battle with his future teammate in Sam Beck. The 1-1. Ground ball to short. Kyle Ball backhands it. The throw across the diamond is not in time. Ball waited just a hair too long to field that one. And it's an infield single for Keyshaw as the Firebirds have their leadoff man aboard here in the eighth. Yeah, ball started to come up on that one. He just stopped a little bit too early. I understand why he stopped. That ball was a bounder, and so he didn't want to end up taking it on a, trying to take it on a short hop and end up it, with it going out of his glove. But that stop just proved to be a little too long as that throw came in just a fraction of a second late. Here comes the junior from James Madison, Chase DeLauder. DeLauder on the night. One for two with a single and a walk. Okay. 
That one is a ball, 1-1 one, one the count to DeLauder. As mentioned, DeLauder, the junior from JMU, James Madison University, a sport and recreation management major. Oh. That one misses, 2-1 the count. DeLauder, a four-year letter winner in high school, named West Virginia and EPAC Player of the Year in 2018. It's a decorated high school baseball player, the 2-1. He flies that one to left field, curving towards the line. Will it stay fair? It will not. A foul ball on Oh, oh boy. Oh, boy. Oh, man, they are not happy. Oh. Foul ball. Wow. The Orleans broadcasters are sitting right on the line, and they've acknowledged. They say it is foul. They're, oh. They were pointing foul. They said that was the right call. They can see them signaling foul. All right. Well, it was close. It was incredibly close. So that's going to force Keyshaw to head all the way back to first, to Lauder all the way back to the plate. He nearly had an extra base hit. They're going to have a conference. I don't understand oh. how it you can have a conference about this because Burns is the umpire, the home plate umpire, who's on the line. Yeah. Nobody else could have seen that call. It's a judgment call. You can't really. I, I mean, he's the really one that's on the overturn. line. I don't understand. Yeah. You can't really have another umpire who's not really on the line to see if that one's fair or foul. Agreed. Yeah. I don't it think you can. Definitely a close play. It was within a foot or two. Now, if it is a fair ball, if they do end up calling it a fair ball, what are they going to do? Because both runners have retreated. It's not like they're going to put him back where they were, you know? Foul ball, officially the call. That gets some boos from the... Two to the count. Lots of booing from the Orleans crowd, but like you said, the broadcasters for Orleans. They were on the line, and they say yeah. it's foul. If they say it's foul, they have the best view besides besides Sparky. That one misses, 3-2 the count. Sam Beck in his second inning of work in his season debut. Came in relief for Saravo, the starter for Hyannis, who went six sensational scoreless innings. The 3-2. Lined foul. Good cut by DeLauder, just... Underneath it as he lines it straight back off the netting. 3-2, nobody out. Battle here from from Beck looking for that first out here in the inning. Double play here could be in the works if they could get it in the infield. The 3-2. Foul tipped, hung on to by Pendleton for a strikeout, and there's one away. All four of the outs Beck has recorded has been via the punch out so far. An effective outing so far through an inning and a third. He's allowed a pair of hits. Walked one, but he's been pretty, I'd say he's been pretty good for his debut tonight. Ground ball to third. Throw on to second for one, on to first, and it is a double play. The inning is over. Hyannis turns a double play to retire the Firebirds. As we head to the bottom of the eighth, Hyannis with a commanding 13-0 lead.
Zane Harris getting ready to lead off the inning for the Harbor Hawks here in the bottom of the eighth. 13 runs on 13 hits. A run, seven hits, three errors for the Firebirds. First pitch to Harris, a called strike, going one. Jeffrey Prommel still on the hill for the Firebirds. He's been throwing strikes out of the bullpen. He's been all in the zone, too. Fortunately for him, the Harbor Hawks have had hot bats tonight. The 0 1 hit on the ground is short. Marcano picks it, throws the first in time, one away. Nice routine play there for Marcano and a good first out for the Firebirds here in the bottom half of the inning. That'll bring up Dom Johnson. Johnson is one for four tonight with a single and a run scored. He dropped a bunt. That allowed him to get to second base on a throwing error. Now what I will say is that last inning, Zane Harris started off the inning with a with an out, and then after that, the next the next seven hitters reach base. So see if the same thing can happen here. The official attendance tonight at McKeon Park comes in that 1,146. A little bit of a quieter night at the ballpark. Yeah. There's Hyannis atop the Cape League with attendance. They're actually, they're, I think they're second right behind Chatham, mm -hmm. but Chat in the top two. Chatham is no surprise that they have the most attendance there. We went, we went to Veterans Field one time this season, and it was packed, packed house. 0-2 to Johnson. One away in the inning. Pitch from Prommel. Ground ball hard, hits a first. Nice pick over there at first by Harmon. He steps in the bag himself. There's two away. Like you said, a good pick over there from Harmon. I have to say, there might have been a little bit of luck within that catch as he, he went up to try to catch it on the hop, and his head went up, so he didn't see it go into his glove. But he still was able to come up with it and make that out. Although they have three errors, their defense has been tested often tonight. Mm -hmm. Lots of balls put in play. The Marcano twins up the middle have been great. As Hardigan can't connect 0-1. Mitch Hardigan having himself a good ball game tonight. Two for three. Also has a walk, an RBI, and a run scored. The 0-1. That misses 1-1. One one. Bottom of the eighth inning. And a ball game that has moved for a game that has seen its fair share of base runners, Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Seven hits so far for the Firebirds, 13 hits for the... Up the middle, and will that be hit number 14 for the Harbor Hawks? We'll see. That is a hit. Mitch Hart again with a three-hit ball game. So now 14 hits for the Harbor Hawks, and you know, with 14 hits, three errors, that's not a bad number considering all of the hits that we've seen you know you don't want to see three errors on the board at all but it would be worse if it was like if it was on you know eight hits seven hits somewhere in there a lot of balls being put in play Pendleton at the plate would like to follow up his Florida Atlantic teammate Hardigan and do the same Pendleton on the night two for four a pair of singles an RBI and a pair of runs scored the 0-1 in the dirt it gets by McNiss says Hardigan will jog to second. McNiss has had a great game behind the dish, I will say. He has. He's been very effective behind the plate. He's been a good wall back there. He's let a couple go by. He's had a couple of missed throws here and there. But other than that, he's been a very good catcher for the team tonight. The count is 1-1 to Caleb Pendleton. Problem will come set and fires. That one is popped up. High hit to center field. DeLauder coming on and calling for it, and he'll make the catch to end the inning. The Harbor Hawks strand one, Orleans coming up for the final time when we return the ninth inning on its way from McKeon Park.
Ninth inning, just moments away from McKeon Park. But first, we're going to toss it down to our sideline reporter, Taylor Farmer. Thanks, guys. As Austin and Lincoln mentioned in the broadcast, there are two sets of twins in tonight's ball game. For Hyannis, the Romano twins, Ryan and Nick at first and second. And for Orleans, the Marcano twins, Julio and David at shortstop and second. Not many twins have moved up to play Major League Baseball together, but very few have ended up on the same team. Could the Romano and or the Marcano twins be the next to do it? It'll be interesting to see as they continue to pursue their baseball career. Austin and Lincoln, back to you guys. Lincoln, a couple of twins in this ball game as we talked about, the Romanos and the Marcanos, and both sets are having pretty impressive ball games. They are. The Marcano twins on the middle infield for the Firebirds have been pretty solid here tonight. The Romano twins as well, both doing really well tonight. And as we know, that's Nick Romano making his debut. He's been on fire on the game tonight. A very impressive outing from him for his debut. The Firebirds down to their final set of votes here as the lefty, Kyle Skidmore, is on the mound now for Hyannis, his second appearance on the season. He made his season debut as that's a Ooh. hot shot to third, and Luke Mann is there to grab it for the first out. We know I've said it before. I'll say it again. There is a good reason they call that the hot corner, and Luke Mann showing it. Showing it to be easy, really. It's not easy at all, but he's making it look easy out there as he grabs a hot shot there from Harmon for out number one. One away brings up Acton, as that one is cut on and missed. Nice pitch there from Skidmore. Corey Acton, the DH. Kyle Skidmore comes from Garner Webb University, the Franklin, Massachusetts native, the home of Dean College, where I attend school, Lincoln. Hmm. Skidmore was added to the roster last week. He's got an effective pitch mix, fastball, and a nice breaking ball to go with it. The 0-2 is the breaking ball, swing and a miss, and there's two away. They'll throw to first, just to be sure. And the Harbor Hawks, one out of way from shutting out the Orleans Firebirds and picking up an impressive win. A beautiful, beautiful breaking ball there. And Skidmore, in his second appearance, has been doing really well here in the ninth. His, of course, his first game coming against the Bourne Braves in that 8-7 walk-off loss. Now Skidmore, in his season at Gardner-Webb, 21 appearances with a 5-1 record. 4.11 ERA, he had 32 Ks, only four walks and 30 innings pitched, 30 and two-thirds. <laughs> Has some family that is a Cape alumni as his brother Brendan Skidmore played for the Red Sox in 2016. All right. The Harbor Hawks, one, uh, one strike away now from picking up a big win. 13 runs, 14 hits for Hyannis. The 0-2. In the dirt, one, two. <laughs> Kyle Skidmore looking to shut the door here in the ninth. Some fans in the crowd on their feet awaiting this last strike. The one, two in the dirt. 2-2. Two, 2-2, two. Two, two, two away. Julio Marcano. Looking to extend the ball game for his Firebirds. Skidmore. But the 2-2. Two, two. Ground ball to third. Luke Mann has it just go under the glove. As... Marcano will reach base and extend the ball game. An unlucky bounce. Man thought that was going to bounce up, and he tried to anticipate it, but instead it landed in the dirt and just went dead and took a little roll right underneath his glove. The error to Luke Mann will extend the inning for Justin Mickness, the catcher. Mickness on the ball game is 0 for 2 with a walk. It's been very solid defensively for the Firebirds tonight. Lefty-lefty matchup is Kyle Skidmore. 
Looks to finish things off here for Hyannis. The runner will go. That one is lined to short and into left field for a base hit. Rounding second, heading to third is Marcano, which puts runners on the corners with two away. Well, Julio Marcano showing his speed, rounding second in a hurry and getting to third before that throw in from Hardigan out and left could be made. And a good single there for, Mick, for uh, Mickens, or Mickness, I should say. David Marcano will dig in. Runners on first and third, two away. Arlene's looking to at least avoid being shut out here. Hyannis looking for their first shutout win of the season. First pitch, runner goes from first, it's popped up. Drifting and it's out of play, 0-1. Good Fire. hustle there from Romano over at first, trying to grab that last foul ball, but sadly just he just ran out of real estate there. One out away from the Harbor Hawks, picking up their second consecutive victory and capping off an impressive win over Orleans. The 0-1 to Marcano is cut on and missed. Foul tipped, hung on to by Pendleton as the runner advances to second base. Runners on second and third for Orleans. Good choice from Pendleton, choosing not to throw down to second, trying to get him. I don't think he would have had a chance to get Mickness going on down to second. The 0-2 from Skidmore. Ground ball to short. Kyle Ball knocks it down. The runner is going to reach base safely, and a run's going to come across. Tough break here for Kyle Skidmore. Not an earned run due to the error by Luke Mann. And I think that one may be ruled an error as well. An error on Kyle Ball. Hyannis having a little bit of trouble finding the final out here in the ballgame. Oh, well, the Firebirds avoid the shutout, but... A good effort there from Ball over at short. A hard hit ground ball. Good job of him of knocking that one down at least, keeping that one from going into the outfield, which could have scored another run. But instead, they're just limited to one. Runner goes again as Costello swings at the first pitch and launches it to left field. Hardigan is running after it, and it drops foul. No doubt about that one being foul. Uh-huh. That was a good, a good yard or two foul. Hardigan was a, almost able to get to it for that third out, but... Orleans is making this last out a little bit difficult to get. Owen oh one to Costello. Costello single to lead off the ball game against Adrian Saravo. The L1 cut on and missed. The runner will advance to second. No throw down, no covered attempt at this point in the ball game. Let Orleans just have the base. Mm -hmm. 0-2, 2 away. You just wanted to worry about that last out, trying to get that final out here. No need to throw down, maybe have someone try to cover a bag. Those can be dangerous plays. The 0-2 popped foul. Out of play. The Harbor Hawks looking to secure the victory. One strike away. Skidmore, the Franklin, Massachusetts native, looking to close the door here in Hyannis. The 0-2. It is a foul ball. Some soft contact by Costello. Extends the ball game. A cool night for baseball as the temperature drops off as we approach the 9 o'clock hour. The 0-2 from Skidmore. Ground ball to short. Ball picks it on a hop. The throw on to first is in time. The Harbor Hawks with an impressive 13-1 victory over the Orleans Firebirds. The offense comes alive, and Hyannis has won two straight. Fantastic game against the Firebirds here tonight. I think there's. I don't think there's anything that really needs to be. Well, there, of course, there are always things to be fixed after any game for any team. But tonight, a solid game on all aspects from the Harbor Hawks tonight and a very impressive win against a very offensive Firebirds team. A terrific start by Adrian Saravo. He was followed up by a good outing by Sam Beck and Kyle Skidmore out of the bullpen. The offense comes alive with 13 runs on 14 hits for Hyannis, including a three-run home run for Luke Mann. Yeah, those double-digit hit 
category games are starting to become a little thing that we've seen multiple times. We saw it last night, seen it again tonight. We saw it a few games ago, actually. And I have to say, getting all those hits after a little bit of a stretch where we hits were a little hard to come by for the team, it's very nice to see that where those bats are alive and well now. That'll wrap things up here from McKeon Parks with a Hawks win. For our director of broadcasting, Harrison Myers, for our producer, Matt Noah, our sideline reporter, Taylor Farmer, and my broadcast partner, Lincoln Revel, I'm Austin Dakuda saying so long. Thank you for watching, and the Hawks win. Have a great night.